Sports Radar of the Year, Jason Wildy. Is there anything anybody loves more than agreeing with Tausch? Packers Hall of Famer, Mark Tauscher. I got a hunch this isn't going to be concise either. Broadcasting live from the Everlight Solar Studio. I would say that you are pretty easygoing. You're actually probably more easygoing than I am. This is Wildy and Tausch, presented by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Well, there's no, you're not easygoing at all. Hey! On 100.5 ESPN, the ESPN app, and Wisconsin On Demand. Edition, which, by the way, is full of F O W and T Z friends of Wilde and Tausch. We got Bulaga on there. We got Elton Jenkins on there. We got Mike Daniels on there. Kenny Clark and Mark Murphy, among others. Edition the. I think they're going to Brazil edition. And the, I am more and more and more intrigued by where this team is at on the offensive line. We spent some time talking to Rashid Walker and to Blaga and to Elton Jenkins about it. It's a really interesting time where they might be adding a tackle early in the draft, but they kind of have their starting five that they feel pretty good about. Addition. Of Will and Tausch. A 94.5 ESPN Milwaukee, 100.5 ESPN Madison, 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. ESPN Wisconsin.com, the ESPN app, your Alexa smart speaker. Streaming live video, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and of course everything you need on WisconsinOnDemand.com and the Wisconsin On Demand app. I'm Chase Wilde in Green Bay. I made it back to the Wilde family basement studios from Lambeau Field. Cut it close as the bus pulled out on its way around the state, including Sun Prairie. Jesse Chippewa Nelson Falls. is it? I'm sorry? Are they heading to Chippewa Falls or not? Uh, we got to get to Chippewa Falls. Did the lights just go out on you? Oh, uh, no. That's a, uh, Sorry. No, my lights are on. Oh. <laughs> the video it looked like suddenly you disappeared jesse nelson is in the everlight solar espn madison studios and from his undisclosed location you hear him he's the packers hall of famer he's mark tauscher a a veteran of the tailgate tour one only mm-hmm. only one yes yeah elton going back to back went last year Good going again elton. this year uh, that's awesome Good yeah for elton uh, uh so why do you think that uh, the Green Bay Packers are going to Brazil. Murphy, tell you that this, this morning? He did not. We will uh, we'll play. I sent Jesse some of uh, my meager recorded on my iPhone outside of a construction zone of Lambeau Field audio, and you can hear him uh, coming up as I asked him a few questions, and so did Domofsky and a few others. Uh, but they, they are definitely going to Sun Prairie later in the week. They've got a few other stops before they get there. But... I just I get the sense that the NFL is going to, shall we say, impose its will on them. And even though they don't really want to go, which of course Mark Murphy does knows he can't say, there are very few things that Mark Murphy I think is really and truly able to um, prevent himself from saying. But he has done a pretty good job of saying. We don't really want to go to Brazil, but they're going to make us go anyway. Uh, that is the vibe uh, both Rob and I got from our interaction with him outside the AmFam gate as they departed. Uh, we'll get to some of that audio coming up. Um, but look, Tausch, I, 
I was talking about this with a few other people from the organization. Like, your point about the potential competitive advantage of avoiding a road trip to Philadelphia, I feel like despite whatever logistical challenges there might be and all the other stuff, that's stuff that Philly's got to deal with anyway. What you don't have to deal with is a hostile crowd that will be making it difficult on you as you jockey for playoff position with the Philadelphia Eagles at Lincoln Financial Field. That's the win, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I've been saying, and that's why I – I mean, I understand nobody wants to go and do a you know, 10-hour flight or whatever it is. 12, I but, was told, by Mark Murphy. Well, okay, well, that's if you got the short runway. Uh, <laughs> But if you are looking at just from a competitive advantage, it's a no-brainer for Green Bay. You play early. Um, you get a, a couple days to reset before because you play on a Friday. You'll be home Saturday, and then you don't play again until probably Sunday or Monday of the next week. Yeah, maybe so, you play Monday. I, I mean, I understand how this all works, and I get that Mark doesn't want to add another layer, but strictly competitively, it's a total win. You you are always looking for ways to gain an edge, and not having to play another road game is a huge edge. You're basically having nine homers and one new, neutral. So that's ten games that you're, you know, you're not going to be playing in a hostile environment. And I would venture to say, don't know what the um, fan base is in Brazil for the Packers, but I feel fairly certain this is not going to be some runaway freight train that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to, you know, inundate the stadium with Eagles fans. I'm guessing at worst it's 50-50, but I would bet knowing how the Packers travel, knowing how big their brand is, that you're basically getting a neutral game against a team that should be jockeying with you and you get to not play them at home. That's a monster win. So Mark Murphy said that they anticipate the announcement any day. And again, he did not say specifically, and we'll hear him coming up. Jesse's doing his best to doctor up the audio. Uh, you know how when we play uh, Where's Wildy and we doctor it to sound like I'm on a, another planet? He's He's got his work cut out for him. It, they were not ideal audio conditions that we had outside. The bus was running, the... The, whatever renovation they're doing on that facade of the stadium was going on. He did not say they're going to Brazil, but he might as well have said they're going to Brazil. Um, I would be curious, Tausch, because we have talked about how they handled London and how Matt LaFleur handled London. You went to London. You were there for the game. But you were there as a spectator and as a fan of the Queen Park Rangers. What are they? Yeah, QPR. Yeah. Um, as a Green Bay Packers player, not a Rangers player, would you have wanted to do this, or are you are, are you like the coaches where you would rather have your daily uh, routine not interrupted by a trip to a foreign land? Yeah, I mean, I think in the grand scheme, you don't want to be messing with a bunch of stuff, but you understand that, and especially early in the season, you understand that you know, you're going to be asked to do this, and if you're going to... You know, I just believe that doing it first game of the season with time to recover, time to get down there early, less training camp, there's a ton of positive things that you can glean from that. So you learn a lot about your football team when you go on the road. and When you have a trip like this, uh, you are going to bond. You're going to – there's a lot. It's you versus everybody, and, yeah, it's a long flight. That part stinks, but – if you're going to do it, there's so many positives that come with it. But, no, I think players and coaches, I totally understand why they don't want to do this. But if they're going to, this is the perfect time to do it. Uh, we we also got to talk to Bulaga, and we talked to Mike Daniels, Kenny Clark, who had not met Jeff Halfley until Jeff Halfley came out to the bus to say oh. farewell to all the, the guys. Is that... Is that normal? Like he said he talked to him on the phone once, but these guys scatter about the country. I was a little surprised when he said he had not met Jeff Halfley until right in front of us while we were conducting an interview with somebody else. Yeah, no, I don't think it's – I mean, when you hire a coach and you're off 
you're going to talk to and they're going to try to you know understand you a little bit you get to meet but you're not in green bay he's grinding away trying to look at tape from last year understand it so i don't i don't think that it's that big of a deal okay uh, and i don't i don't think it's some abnormal deal that they're this is the first time that they've met. Yeah, he said that they had uh, only talked on the phone once, but, again, they've got plenty of time, starting with the off-season program, which kicks off in less than a week. Uh, next week, Monday, it will begin. Um, all right, we'll get to Brazil and Mark Murphy momentarily. Uh, I was thinking about this yesterday because, I'll be honest, for much of the afternoon, I was thinking that the eclipse was much ado about nothing. And then I picked the girls up at school, and it was still going on, and Sydney gave me her glasses, and I looked up. It's actually kind of, I have to admit, it's kind of cool. Did you partake at all, either of you, in this? And I, I was wrong. When, once I looked through the glasses and saw the blockage, I was like, hey, that is kind of cool, actually. Just me? Jesse? I did it outside uh, here at our office. We had the, the third floor they kind of opened up. It's like this outdoor balcony area that you can go out and look. So a lot of people were out there. I was able to go see, and someone had the glasses. Mm -hmm. So I borrowed the glasses. I tried to just look and kind of give it a glimpse real quick. You're not and, supposed to do that. No, nah, but I, it like, yeah. it was Burn just, your retinas. But it just felt like it was glorified like clouds or shade until you use the glasses. When you use the glasses to look at, it was pretty neat. I would I would say it was kind of it was kind of cool to look at, and then some of the tricks they were showing us, like the uh, if you cut a hole in a paper plate, you could see the shadow on the ground was only like the crescent of the sun instead of the full circle. There mm. there were some cool little tricks that I think people learned seven years ago that they brought back yesterday. So yeah, it was kind of fun. It was it a you know, life changing spectacle? No. Were you would you have driven to Indianapolis for it? No, no, no. Tausch, you're not into it? No, I was not into it, and I feel pretty good about not being into it. I, I saw the videos of it, and I think if you're going to do this, jump on an airplane and just follow it. I think then you get a good hour and a half you can track it. and there are, are the actually, There are actually plane rides that did that. So you could just go and follow the uh, path of what this eclipse was. But, no, I, I told you yesterday, and nothing changed. I mean, I think it's cool, and I'm glad. What was cool about it was a lot of people were excited about it. Great. Kudos to them for being excited, but it just wasn't for me. Uh, I would also add that uh, our old teammate and friend Tommy Olson was in Cleveland. He's left us for ESPN Cleveland. And they had fans out to their ballpark for it because Cleveland was in the path of totality. That looked like a pretty cool vibe. That looked like... Folks I think if really you were going that. to, if you were going to see the whole total thing, and it's right there in your backyard, that's awesome. But if you have to give great effort to go and do it, uh, not for me. But again, man, everybody's got different interests. Kudos to you all if you love it. I just that's not me. Well, one thing that does not require great effort is putting in new windows from Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. As I made my trek from my house. To Lambeau Field, there is a new billboard on 172 of Gina Della, and it's just her. No Jeff Levering, no Mark Tauscher. As, as you may have heard, she's doing some things. She looks great yeah. on the billboard, and so does the 36-month 0% financing that it also says up on the billboard. Mm -hmm. You could turn your ordinary space into something extraordinary with brand-new Pella windows and doors. The luxurious look sleek design and custom colors available they're guaranteed to give your home the extra pop to entertain and to keep you comfortable it's the best of both worlds plus getting the perfect windows and doors for your home has never been easier right now get zero percent interest for up to 36 months or no down payment no interest and no payments for up to 18 months if you book by april 30th take ownership of your living space and make it a place worth living with pella windows and doors of wisconsin We'll hear from Mark Murphy next. It's Wilde and Tausch.
This is Wilde and Tausch, presented by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Call Gina Della from Pella today, 855-PELLA-WI, and online at PellaWI.com slash radio. Beautify your entertainment space with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Hi, this is Gina Della from Pella. Turn your ordinary space into something extraordinary with brand new Pella Windows. Plus, getting the perfect windows and doors for your home has never been easier. Right now, get 0% interest for up to 36 months, or no down payment. Payment, no interest and no payments for up to 18 months if you book before April 30th. Take ownership of your living space and make it a place worth living with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Hey, it's Hunter Vaughn. ESPN Madison and Zimbra Honda are celebrating the area's best high school sports stories with the Game Changers of the Month. Follow ESPN Madison on social media to see teams making an impact in their community. Nominate your local team today at ESPNMadisonGameChangers.com. Mark Tosher here for Chalmers Jewelers. I've been a big fan of Scott and Garrett and the whole team at Chalmers Jewelers for years now. I go there, my friends go there, and most importantly, my wife loves it whenever I get her something from Chalmers Jewelers. Well, what's right around the corner? Mother's Day. Show some love to the incredible women in your life and stop at Chalmers Jewelers, the place to go for that perfect gift. I recommend Chalmers Jewelers in Middleton and Madison. Chalmers Jewelers in Middleton and Madison. The host might be irrelevant, but the conversations aren't. So to only have two wins in the NCAA tournament since they made the Sweet 16 in 2017, it's just unacceptable for a program that should be nationally recognized. Mr. Irrelevant with Alex Strofe. I was a betting man. I would guess Greg Gard is the head coach next season. It's, it's got to be a big tournament run or bust next year. Mr. Irrelevant with Alex Strofe. Live on ESPN Madison's YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And available wherever you get your podcasts. Stoughton Health, in collaboration with patient and family advisors, seeks to advance the healthcare experience at Stoughton Health by providing a forum for past patients and families to provide feedback on a variety of healthcare and other related topics. Advisors offer constructive feedback on their personal journey at Stoughton Health, helping to elevate the patient experience and increase satisfaction. Interested? Please call Amy at 608-873-2308. Listen to Madison Money Guy every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. on 100.5 ESPN and ESPNWisconsin.com. I like to refer to inflation as the silent killer. It's an invisible risk. It's just the idea that things get more expensive over time. You're going to need milk and eggs when you're in your early 60s and when you're in your early 80s. You're going to get a loaf of bread, and it's going to be more expensive 20 years from now. Christian Finfrock is the Madison Money Guy. Call him today at 208-1800. Join Prairie Athletic Club and spring forward your membership today. Hi, this is Sarah Tauscher encouraging you to save now until the end of August when you join the pack. The Platinum membership is everything you want and more, including Pilates, hot yoga, bar, unlimited training zone, and boot camp classes. Discover the ultimate wellness experience tailored just for you. Not a member? Not a problem. Guests are welcome daily. Head to prairieathletic.com or stop in today for all their membership specials. Prairie Athletic Club, family fun community. The Packers Tailgate Tour is coming to Sun Prairie on Friday, April 12th to help support Sunshine Place, a nonprofit community resources center dedicated to household stability in Sun Prairie and Eastern Dane County. Sunshine Place provides meals, clothing, and living supplies along with a wide array of social and community services to community members facing food insecurity and other hardships. Join the Packers Tailgate Tour in supporting Sunshine Place of Sun Prairie and Dane County. Visit sunshineplace.org to learn more. For official rules and more information about every contest on 100.5 ESPN, visit ESPNWisconsinContest.com. That's ESPNWisconsinContest.com. You're listening to 100.5 ESPN and the ESPN app. On the air, on demand, on social, on Wisconsin sports. Serving Wisconsin sports fans. This is 100.5 ESPN. The tailgate tour bus is rolling. It'll eventually make it to Sun Prairie at the end of its tour on Friday. We will be in Sun Prairie at Buck and Honey's together for that 
exciting occasion. Uh, you didn't happen to ask Bulaga this morning if he's coming on with us tomorrow. I actually didn't? asked him yesterday. <laughs> Uh, he does not anticipate joining the program because he doesn't right. know what his responsibilities will be. Talking to America's youth and raising money for charitable causes. So he is, uh, I would list him as doubtful on the appearance report. Um, because of a donkey coming out of his, never mind. Uh, you have to be watching the video to know that. Why do you keep that picture I upgraded that picture. It's so much better the second time around. Uh, so Bulaga is there. Mike Daniels is there. A lot of excitement about what this scheme could mean for Kenny Clark. We'll talk a little bit about that a little later in the program. But we need to talk about Brazil. And Mark Murphy, always the comedian, making sure that he also points out some color scheme hints that might be there for green and yellow or green and gold. Apparently and they like Brazilian. green and gold. Oh, wow, listen to that. You, <laughs> you clipped that out. That's an, You can add that to your mix. Apparently they like green and gold. <laughs> Complete with the chuckle. So <laughs> here, uh, uh, you got a lot of hot keys back there, Jesse. He's just a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> he really is. All right. So we talked about Brazil. Then we talked about a couple other things. Then I brought it back to Brazil. So here is the initial part of the discussion with Mark Murphy outside the AmFam gate and outside the construction zone and outside the running tailgate tour bus about the possibility of the Packers playing in Brazil to open the season. Yeah, I anticipate a decision pretty soon. Yeah. So you're still in the running? Uh, yes, we are still in the running. Yeah. Have you done any runway uh, tests or, you know, you got any more information on, it's not really a runway issue, is it? Or is it more equipment to load the plane? Logistical issues, yeah. yeah. The, the league's working through on their those. Okay. Is it that much bigger of a plane than what you guys took to London? Oh, yeah. London? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah London was probably six or seven hours flight. This is 12. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> Rob could not have sounded more skeptical <laughs> with that question. So Chris Roth asks about runways, and then Rob asks about the plane... Uh, is it really that much longer of a flight? Um, it is, uh, and again, I don't know if that's accurate. Uh, and if they're f driving to Milwaukee first, if they are going, which, again, I must emphasize that it's not official, but the way he was talking, like they're, you know, they're, they're figuring out the logistics of uh, what plane they'll need and how they get there. You don't do that for a team that's not going to Brazil, I would think. So... We talked about a few other things, and then I brought it back to Brazil by asking yeah. this. Mark, one more thing about um, Brazil. You were talking about Packers everywhere. Yeah. I mean, this brand is international. Do you get the yeah. sense that the league would like you guys to go to Brazil? Yeah, I think we're either the first or second most popular team in Brazil. They Apparently, they like green and gold. <laughs> I think we, I believe... I'm not really sure. I think New England might be ahead of us because of Tom Brady and Giselle, but you know, so, so I think that's <laughs> a few years. <laughs> no, I think we're uh, we're very popular there. I mean, it's you know, as we talked about, we're kind of the people's team. You know, I think <clears throat> people really like the idea of a community-owned team and, you know, with our history and tradition. Is the drawback just from, you know, coaches are creatures of habit. They they want to be able to just have regular weeks. Is that one of the drawbacks from a football perspective is how yeah, different that is? Yeah, the logistics, I mean, uh, you know, the Philadelphia will just hop on a plane and go down, and we're not sure that we'll, you know, exactly what, what we'll have to do to get to Brazil. Um, and then after that he says, but if if we're chosen, we'll, we'll go and we'll be happy to do it. Uh which is great because he almost forgot to add that part before we ended our session with him. Tausch, turn on your translator hat. Does that sound? Am I am I wrong to think that he sounds like a guy whose team is going to Brazil? Uh, no, it sounds like it, and it sounds like the the NFL is kind of strong armed and forced. I think the Packers put enough stuff out and tried to get it, and then. The Cleveland Browns, I don't know, I can't remember which player came out and said that, you know, they're We're going. going. And that, right. kind of, that threw us off. So 
I think the Hayes in the barn, and I think what Mark said there about the being the most popular team outside of the Patriots is the reason that they're going. So I would recommend when and if this is announced that Matt LaFleur and the entire staff takes a much different approach than what they did the last time. Mm-hmm. And once it gets announced, if it does, don't make any excuses. Don't complain about runways and anything else. There's You need to learn lessons in life. And I think Matt LaFleur has learned some lessons as a coach. He's gotten better. This would be one thing. I think it's one of his lower moments. And if you look back at that season, the way Aaron busted his thumb and how that game played right? out, it set the team in a tailspin that they never really were able to recover from. So I hope that that's the case. Um, again, look at this as a positive. You can kind of gear yourself up for camp by putting this out there. This will be what you probably after the first week or two of training camp, this is what you're going to be going towards and focusing on. So I think in the long run, again, don't know how the game is going to play out, but this can be a big positive for this football team if they go in with the right attitude. All right, so as we like to say around here, not everyone listens every day, but you have talked about two things a lot of times uh, over the years. One was your criticism of Lafleur, and I think it was very warranted uh, with his attitude. He made it very clear he did not want to go, and he was not happy that the Packers had to go. Okay. The other one is you've always talked about the importance of communication and messaging and how you really know if the locker room is on the same page when you're hearing the same things from players as you hear from coaches. Well, that week you heard Aaron Rodgers talk about essentially how they weren't embracing the trip to London, how they weren't going early to take in the sights and the sounds of being there. And so they definitely weren't on the same page. I am curious, given your experience, when a coach has a bad attitude, how does that impact how the players approach the trip, have a mentality about the trip? Because you're, I believe you're a 1,000% right that – they look like a team that had taken on the persona of this is such an inconvenience. I really wish we were just playing these guys at Lambeau Field. Yeah, you have to set the tone, and that's why Matt LaFleur needs to be better with what he did because I do think, especially you listen to what Aaron at that point and some of the veterans, you were the last team to get an opportunity to go play overseas, and there's a lot of fun that can be had. You can make this – uh, a business trip, but also you can have a lot of fun. You can go to soccer games. You can go and experience. It's kind of like going to a bowl game. Main thing is you yeah. go to win, but you also experience what you're doing. And uh, the difference, you know, Barry Alvarez used to always say, and one I, something I always remember was in our big – back in the old days when we didn't have laptops, it was big binders. Last page on the binder was win the bowl game. Have a great experience, but win the bowl game. And that was mm-hmm. always the last thing that we'd leave – when we'd go through a thing, and that was something that I know stuck into a lot of guys' heads. So you get your directives, and the messaging is sent by the front, by the you know the people leading your football team. And when you have the scenario that happened in London, where Matt Lafleur was pretty adamant that he did not want to go, and he did not want to do things and kind of embrace it, it was more like let's just go over there, get it done, and move on. Uh, that's a losing formula. So I'm sure that will be lessons learned by Matt and his staff. Uh, There's an interesting piece from Bill Barnwell that I want to get to. I am a little irritated because there's, you know, there's always that section at the beginning of his stories where you could jump to the team that you want to read about. Well, they only did like a handful of teams, and so you have to go through the effort to scroll all the way down to find the Packers and what he has to say about them and their draft status. The only thing more irritating than that is having an out-of-date bathroom or maybe one where there's four toilets right next to each other, which I still think that photo was doctored. All I know... (laughs) And then, of course, there's that's the Sistine Chapel. That's a glimpse of the... Tosh took a picture of the Sistine uh, Chapel there. <laughs> Breaking Coliseum. the policy. Uh, yes, and they Kohler needed services. some updates. And if you're looking for it, Kohler Services have you covered. If you need a bath or shower remodel, 
Turn to Kohler Service as a family-owned business for 150 years. Kohler is your Wisconsin manufacturer, providing care for life this month only. Zero interest for 12 months, and you get a free shower door with your Lugstone shower remodel. Visit KohlerServicesWI.com to request your free quote, and with fast, professional installation always included. Again, that's KohlerServicesWI.com. We'll get to that Bill Barnwell piece. The question, should the Packers trade up, trade back, or stay put? This is as hedgy of an answer from Bill Barnwell. You would have thought I wrote it. We'll talk about it next. It's Will Dean's Ouch. Watch every ESPN Madison show live every day. Subscribe to ESPN Madison on YouTube for live video of every show and exclusive content. Just search ESPN Madison. ESPN Wisconsin's Mark Tauscher here for my friends at Kohler Services. If you need a bath or shower remodel, turn to Kohler Services. Family owned for 150 years, Kohler is your Wisconsin manufacturer providing care for life. And this month only, pay zero interest for 12 months and get a free shower door with your Lugstone shower remodel. Visit KohlerServicesWI.com to request your free quote with fast, professional installation always included. That's KohlerServicesWI.com. Metro Ford of Madison is Madison's trusted Ford dealership. Whether you're in the market for a new or new to you vehicle, Metro Ford of Madison has the customer service that's second to none. Metro Ford is also the home of the two years no charge maintenance offer on new vehicle purchases, making it the place to go for the new Ford of your dreams. Browse their inventory, schedule a service, or see this month's offers at MetroFordOfMadison.com. That's MetroFordOfMadison.com. Ben Brust here to tell you about the Princeton Club. I joined the Princeton Club because I was looking for a place I could invest in my health, and the environment and the community I have felt has made it so easy for me to incorporate it into my everyday life. It doesn't matter where you're at in your fitness journey because they have something to offer everyone. It also goes beyond fitness. From the moment you walk in the club to the moment you walk out, there is a togetherness felt throughout the members and staff that keeps you going for your better tomorrow. Don't wait any longer and get started on your fitness journey today at PrincetonClub.net. That's PrincetonClub.net. Mike Greenberg. Green. That we're just talking about the football piece of it. Aaron Rodgers, from the moment he got there until the moment he got hurt, was the best leader the Jets have had since Rex Ryan. Whatever you think of his politics, his social positions, or anything else, if you're a football fan, if you're a fan of the Jets, I would rather have Aaron Rodgers setting the tone than anyone else they have in the building. Greeny. Weekdays noon to 2 on 100.5 ESPN. It's official. 2023 was the biggest jackpot year on record at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. Check out these totals. We had over 57,000 jackpots and more than $134 million in winnings. This shatters our previous record year, and we have no intention of stopping here. And with our 95% average payout, we continue to be the official home of the big win right here in Madison. Let's keep it going in 2024 with even more jackpots at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. Why does Calshear Implement Company Incorporated have several copier printers from James Imaging Systems? President Glenn Whipperfirth. Good people, easy to work with, and local. Talk to me about the James Imaging Systems people. Greg is our service guy. He's been phenomenal to work with. Andrew. Andrew, that's your James sales rep. He's been great to work with as well. James Imaging Systems, local people, and a 100% Wisconsin-owned and managed business technology company. That means a lot to local businesses. It definitely means something to me. That's actually the reason why we're still with them. Glenn, does James Imaging Systems help you keep your customers happy? Happy customers, yes. And you've also been a James customer for years, right? Yes. Happy customers make repeat customers. Be happy. Switch to copy your printers from James Imaging Systems. It's easy to do. Call 608-221-3457 or visit jamesimaging.com. James Imaging Systems, your local business technology partner. Since 1956, Holman Lindsay Paints has been making paint in Wisconsin for Wisconsin. Because of their commitment to making great paint for Wisconsinites, Holman Lindsay has grown over the years to 26 locations in this great state. Headquarters in Sun Prairie with a state-of-the-art facility, Holman Lindsay has the paints you need to make your job better. From do-it-yourself to professional, Holman Lindsay has paint for everyone. Visit one of their local locations today in Madison, Sun Prairie, Middleton, and Janesville. 
We're on the Bucks. This Bucks team looks too old to be able to make it to the finals. Because we're on Wisconsin Sports. They have the talent, but will they have the legs? Nobody covers the Bucks like 100.5 ESPN. I say, hey, I'll be gone in there, but I'll be back from around the way. It seems like everywhere I go, the more I see, the less I know. But I know one thing, that I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Now, I'm not a highly metaphysical man. but Oh, Bill Barnwell. 9,000 words later. Uh, The Packers currently hold the 25th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. So the shortcuts jump to an interesting pick are my options. Uh, New England at 3, the Giants at 6, Chicago at 9, Minnesota at 11, etc., etc., etc. Packers are not included, so I go way down to 25. And this uh, brought a smile to my face. What should they do? Stay put or make a slight trade up? <laughs> Bill Barnwell writes. Very wildy esque. Sounds wow. like a very wildy esque answer. Uh, GM Brian Gutekunst is willing to make moves in both directions. Packers moved up for Darnell Savage, Jordan Love, and Christian Watson in past drafts, but they also traded down twice on day two last year and still managed to land Jaden Reed in the process. Look, Tausch, we talked about this yesterday a little bit. I spent even more time with Brian Bulaga and Uncle Homer on the Homer Hour last night talking about this. And I understand I'm not aggressive, and I'm a Ted Thompson acolyte, so that's probably part of it too. But I I want as many swings as possible, at least at premium picks. And maybe, and I said this to Brian, maybe Goody has finished their board and says, hey, there's a drop-off, there's a cliff, a plateau, where after the 19th pick, 20 through 55 are essentially the same guy, right, in terms of grading. And if that's the case, and you're sitting at 25, and there's not a big difference between who you can pick there and who you can pick at 41 or your other second-round pick, then maybe you do make a move. But I, I five in the first 91 is awfully appealing. And, yeah, there's six more picks on day three, but I feel a lot better about manipulating the board on day three and moving around than giving up one of those second or third round picks to move up in the first round. Are you of that same mind or am I just being Mr. Conservatism? No, I mean, I think it, I look at it and what's your conviction level? Because, you know, normally you're going to you know stay pat and not make any big moves, but had Ted Thompson done that, and not went and got Clay Matthews to win yeah. a championship. No, Probably you're right. Not. So I, I think with the way this team is built, and I know yesterday was Cooper DeGene's uh, pro day, and his scores are exactly what the Green Bay Packers are looking for as a defensive back. He's probably not going to be available. Is that somebody that Goody and, their, and those guys love, that they would move up from 26 to 20 to get him? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to find that out. But I don't think it should be the case where you just look at it and say, yeah, we want as many cracks. Of course you do. But you can look back at some NBA teams where they had all these first-round picks and they never cashed in. It's great to accumulate a bunch of stuff, but you got to get some results mm-hmm. with what you're doing. So the more players you can bring in that can make an impact, great. But you need – especially with those early picks, you need impact players. So I can understand both sides of it because if I said this last year, the way Goody approached it was collect, collect, collect. Well, that was last year's team. Just like last week's gas prices aren't this week's, (laughs) this is not last year's team. This is not a total rebuild. Now you're chasing a championship. So you're not stockpiling a ton of talent. You're now looking at it and saying, What pieces do we need to put us over? We have a good young core. We've built this roster back up really quickly. Are there guys that we really are focused on 
that we want, and if that's the case, you go and move to get him. But if not, yeah, you can sit there and you can just kind of let the board fall. Get a bu- You're never going to go wrong bringing in a bunch of good football players. But at some point, you have to move your chips in and say, this is the guy that can be the difference maker. He did that with Jordan Love to much chagrin by a lot of us. Gave up a fourth to move up to get him. Took a while for that whole thing to develop. But it ended up being the right move, at least for now. And he set this franchise up for greatness in the future because he had the stones to make a really tough call. Yeah, and and he does have a lot to work with here. Uh, a court, I didn't know this website existed. It's called Tankathon, which apparently evaluates draft capital and the quality and quantity that you have. And in the NFL one, Tankathon has the Packers with the fifth most draft capital of any team in the league. So when you have a young team with a bunch of young players that you already really like from past drafts, maybe you use some of that capital and you target a specific player. Um, I don't know where they have Cooper DeGene uh, or where they have Chop Robinson or where they have last name Newton, Johnny Newton, Uh, but... Those all make sense, right? If they were to go defense, those are all guys that are the type of players at positions of need that they could use. It was interesting, though. You know, we talked to Rasheed Walker for a while outside the bus, and he's, I mean, I don't know what we expected him to say, but he certainly gave off a vibe of, hey, if they want to pick a an offensive lineman in the first round, I don't care. Right, it's my job to compete. Um, yeah, he'll just, care though. He will definitely care. care, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, I guess you know this was another thing. Balaga and I were talking about yesterday. Like, I don't know how you feel about Rasheed Walker. I, I think he's okay. I thought he got better through the course of the season. But if you're sitting at 25, or say you move up like Barnwell mentions a few picks, and there's a tackle you really like. Uh, I think they're taking that guy. I'm mm-hmm. completely convinced they are. Aren't you? Yeah, uh, there's no doubt. And I think Rasheed Walker deserves a lot of credit for you know playing last year and improving and making this a tough call. But I don't think there's a doubt that the Green Bay Packers understand when they let Runyon go and Yash that that's going to be a spot. Mm-hmm. And by all accounts, that is a uh, position group that is pretty strong in this draft. I would be surprised if you don't see two of those five or at least one, whether it's an interior guy or somebody that's versatile enough to do everything, and then you kind of find the spot for him. Barton from Duke is somebody that keeps popping up on people's people's mocks. So big bodies, I think that's the Ted Thompson approach. Get big bodies that can move. You can find other positions. There's not a ton of 300-pound-plus people that can move at the level you need in the NFL, you can find running backs, you can find wideouts. There's a lot, but can you find those guys that are the key and the linchpins to making your group go? Because for as much as we're raving about Jordan Love and how he was able to turn his season around last year, I'm convinced that it all started when that group because the Detroit game at Lambeau was a disaster. They got mauled, mm-hmm. and when that group started getting a lot better, Jordan stayed in the pocket. He would deliver the football on time, and that's when this group turned around is when the offensive line improved enough to let Jordan gain some confidence in standing in the pocket and throwing the football, running it. And I think everybody up there understands that you can you need to continue to supplement that group. And if there's somebody that they like, uh, uh, they're going to grab them. I think there's no doubt. Uh, one more thing from this Barnwell piece. Uh, after a breakthrough season a year ago, Gutekunst can afford to be patient. Cornerback is a possible landing spot for Green Bay with Jair Alexander a potential cap casualty over the next 12 months, but the Packers probably wouldn't need to trade up to add a useful cornerback in round one. They might need to trade up to get ahead of the Eagles if there's a specific guy they want, though. That's exactly your point about Cooper to John, right? I mean, that's mm-hmm. right there. That's it. 
Are you we have to get certain him. that Jair Alexander's happy and ready to go? I'm Are not certain, certain that of that. He is? We should talk about that some more coming up because because I believe uh, last when everybody left, did he not put some very cryptic things out? He obviously is disappointed with uh, you know the Charlotte deal. Uh-huh. And you never know with Jair where he's at. I'd be curious. I know there's a new system, and it's not Joe Barry anymore. But is he content? Is he going to be here? Is he going to be working? Is he going to understand? Is he going to be here all off season? Yeah, uh, that is an excellent question, which we will explore coming up next. want to remind you, Gruber Law says one call, that's all. David and his team are the best, and they've been supporting our show and our station for a long time. They're a great partner. And, again, Hopefully you never need to call them. Hopefully you never need to make that one call. That's all. But if you do, it's always great to know that they are there and they're the best in the business. Go to gruber-law.com to find out more about the firm, more about all the great lawyers that are there, and more about what David and his team do in the community. Or make that call, 414-276-6666, 414-276-6666. Is Jair Alexander happy? I don't know. What if he's not? We'll talk about that next. It's Wilde Tausch. Like, share, and follow ESPN Medicine everywhere. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok for more great content from ESPN Medicine. This is 100.5 ESPN and Wisconsin On Demand. There's a good chance if you watch sports, you're getting served information about hormone optimization. What does that even mean? Dr. Nestor Rodriguez at Carbon World Health can tell you exactly what hormone optimization means. He will take your blood work and let you know if it's right for you. If you're feeling sluggish, not losing weight like you used to, you're not gaining muscle like you used to, or you just don't feel like yourself in most aspects of your life, go see Dr. Ness Rodriguez at Carbon World Health. In fact, sign up for the six-week experience so you can see everything that Carbon World Health has to offer, including hormone optimization. Learn more at CarbonWorldHealth.com. You, Ra, Ra, Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin present your Badger Minute. Here's Alex Strofe. This Badger Minute brought to you by your Badgerland Chevy dealers, proud supporters of Badger Athletics. Go to BadgerlandChevy.com. Former Wisconsin men's basketball coach Bo Ryan is headed to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame announced over the weekend. Ryan, who led the Badgers to back-to-back Final Fours during his time as head coach, reacted to the news on ESPN with Reese Davis and Jay Billis. I coached in junior high, high school, NAIA, Division Three, and then Division One. So my, my love for the game is on paper with 42 years of trying to help young people find a better path. Ryan will officially be inducted this August alongside 12 other inductees. Badger Minutes on ESPN Wisconsin are brought to you by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Schedule an appointment online today at PellaWI.com. To those who've ever dreamt of their perfect event, those dreams are worthy and they are possible. Hi, it's Jeffrey from Celebrations Entertainment. With hard work, passion, and great music, we will make your event dreams a reality. Every event is a labor of love with one-on-one planning, customization, and flawless execution. Bringing your event to life is what we do. For a fun, memorable event, visit celebrationsentertainment.com. That's celebrationsentertainment.com. Since j k Security Solutions opened in 1987, our attention to detail and customer service have been our strongest assets. I'm President Jeffrey Beckman. We'll always do our best to find the most efficient and cost-effective solution to every job we tackle. Whether it's security for your home or business, installing video surveillance, or being able to control your garage doors from your phone, we can help you feel empowered with simple and user-friendly technology. Let's work together to secure your home or business. JKSecurity.com. Your Honda gets you everywhere. When it needs service, you need Zimbrick Honda service. Their customer service is second to none, and you can experience it yourself at two convenient Madison locations on Fish Hatchery Road and Grand Canyon Drive. Honda certified technicians handle it all. You can even get flexible payment options. Fix your car now and pay later. Apply online to see your options in seconds with no hard credit check. Make your service appointment online at ZimbrickHonda.com. Zimbrick Honda Service Center on Fish Hatchery Road and Grand Canyon Drive. Part of the Madison community since 1973. Shop Zimbrick Honda. Hey everyone, Molly Brown from ESPN Madison here for the best Southwestern food in the Madison area. It's always Pasquale's Cantina for me and my family. 
Whether I'm enjoying my favorite taco salad, their awesome chips and guac, or one of their famous burritos, Pasquale's is the best for authentic Southwestern fare. Visit one of their locations in Verona or Middleton today, or check out their menu and order online at Pasquale'sCantina.com. Bringing the flavors of the Southwest to the Midwest. Pasquale's Cantina. Condon Jewelers, Condon Jewelers, the jeweler on the east side, the jeweler on your side. When you see Diamond Jim, you can count on him to be on your side. Selection beyond compare with on-site repair, so you can wear your jewelry with pride. Condon Jewelers, Condon Jewelers, the jeweler on the east side, the jeweler on your side. Wilty and Tausch on 100.5 ESPN is brought to you by Everlight Solar. Save money, save the planet. Everlight Solar. Don't ever see you sober if I'm breathing. Race it to the moonlight and I'm speeding. I'm ready to the stars, ready to go far and start walking. Don't so the post from Jair Alexander that Tausch is referring to from 10 weeks ago uh, on the uh, account Jaws Island. So there you have it. Uh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lambo, for six years. Thank you to those who showed love throughout my journey. And it's got a few questions, a few photos of him uh, on the practice field. Uh, most of them, though, are him with fans and signing autographs and the like. So um, I remember when this came out and people wondering if it was farewell. And then, you know, Goody said under no circumstances, no, we're not trading him. Now Aaron Jones was supposed to be back, too. Indeed. Thank you. Finishing our sentences again. Um, so you brought this up. When you think about this, do you find yourself wondering just how happy he is to be a Green Bay Packer still? Yeah, I, uh, I definitely am curious. I mean, he's under contract. He's being paid a lot of money. Uh, and the fact, I, I think the reason I'm not thinking there's going to be any kerfuffles is because there's a new coordinator, and maybe Jeff Halfley is going to be more Jair friendly. Mm -hmm. But we all know Jair is a wild card. Different cat. We don't know what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know where his head's at, and he was obviously unhappy for a vast majority of last year. Has he all of a sudden a lot happier now? I don't know. I think it'll be really interesting. The off-season program starts next week. Be really curious if he's there. Voluntary. And I know some veterans. I know some veterans don't, but usually, you know, Russ Ball puts a lot of money on the line for these guys to be there. Jair has missed in the past. That's. It doesn't seem like that's a big deal, but I think it is something to watch. I'm super curious about where his head is at from the perspective of he, of course, said all the right things after the suspension, right? I mean, because they were starting to win, he certainly did not want to uh, make things worse. I think give he was... Give up a lot of bread when you get suspended. Yeah. Give up a lot of bread. And so I... I don't put a whole lot of stock in, well, they said they were all, all sides were better for it after the suspension, and this will be a positive moving forward, and there will be better communication because they're not going to say, yeah, I was pretty pissed about it, and I don't think they needed to suspend me, and now I'm just as mad as I was before, and I have less money because I missed a week of pay. But, again, he is a and, – and you played with – all kinds of different players during your career, right? So, but he is a different personality. Like, I get along great with him when I talk to him, but I don't know him. I don't pretend to know him well. I don't pretend to know what makes him tick necessarily. I don't, he's, he's a little eccentric. 
And so, and he doesn't, he doesn't make himself especially available in terms of like, there was that time last season when David Bakhtiari stood in front of his locker for 45 minutes and took us through the entirety of his knee journey and what he was thinking and how he was feeling and how he still wants to, at the time, still wanted to play. It was after he had played in week one, missed a couple weeks. He hadn't gone on IR yet. And he was raw and vulnerable and open and, like, one of the most open interactions I've had with a player ever. I've never had that with Jair. So I don't pretend to know what he's thinking or what he's feeling. But I have the suspicion. I have no evidence I don't know this for certain by any means. But I don't think everything's all hunky-dory there. If you asked me to pick, everything's great or there's still some shoes, some issues going on there, if I had to choose, I would choose there's some still underlying issues there. And like you said, Jeff Halfley, who has worked with Richard Sherman, who has worked with Darrell Rivas, who clearly wants to run a system which will allow his corners to get more picks. The Packers had seven interceptions last season as a team. Not not great. So I think that there's a chance that it does turn out to be a great thing for him, and he is at the other end of the happiness spectrum than he was with Joe Barry and the way things were going last season when he missed all that time and he had the shoulder injury and then he – I, I I think there's a very good chance that could be the case, but I can't say that beyond a reasonable doubt. And I don't know if yeah, anybody I think can. What's, what's going to be interesting is if Green Bay drafts a corner with that 25th pick. I think that will be a big telltale sign because Jair is more than likely going to be here because he still has guaranteed money left on his deal. But I think he is going to be – on a very it, – it's going to be very touch and go. I think once you do some things that you lose trust in your front office, it is now touch and go as far as any little thing becomes a big thing. So Jair will have to reprove himself again. His teammates seem to love him. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, especially with star players, when you draft somebody and – your guaranteed money is winding down, it puts up a big red flag. And I think it puts up, uh, in, in their own mind, they start doubting and wondering where they stand with this football team. And when you're not fully in, and I think last year, for as much as we you know, want to critique Jair, he was injured for a vast majority of the year. He missed a bunch of games. Uh-huh. He did his captain thing. I don't know how dialed in he was for a vast majority of the year. I think at the end of the season, I think he jumped on and was in and was hoping that you know this team could go some special places. But every year is different. So that is something I'll be watching very closely as far as how Green Bay approaches the draft because if they go and grab a Cooper DeGean or a first-round corner, I think that's sending a big signal to Jair Alexander that, his time in Green Bay might be coming to an end. Well, and let's not forget the other complicating factor here, which is they have to make a decision like they had to last year on Jordan Love. Now they have to make a decision on Eric Stokes. And based on Uh, his durability issue, there's no way that they're giving him the fifth-year option at $12 million. So now not not. only do do you not know what, Jair Alexander's future is with your team, but you're going to now have Eric Stokes on a final year of his rookie deal without a fifth year option, and you're not sure what you have in your 2021 first round pick either, which makes that position, not just in the short term, but in the long term, a very clear need. Yeah, you, you have Keyshawn. You feel good about him in the slot. You feel like the law firm has some talent that you feel good about, but. The more I think about it, and that's a good reminder, I see Kevin King re-sign, or signed with the Falcons. I yeah. sometimes get Stokey and King uh, confused. When you have someone that has been injured and not been able to stay healthy like Stokes, I, 
I love the way he finished his rookie season, and since then he has not been able to stay healthy. You can't count right? on what he's doing. So for as much as I'm thinking O-line, 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 I think you could make a really good argument that corner is probably as vital of a position to restock as well with a bona fide stud if you can find him to put him into the mix because of the things you just mentioned, the uncertainty of Jair and obviously the injury history of Stokes. All right, we're going to shift gears. Uh, Our friend Evan Cohen from Unsportsmanlike will join us at the top of the 10 o'clock hour, but before we can get to him, the, the... the most popular intern in Johnson and Sons paving history, the most experienced in the in the concrete and asphalt game, is getting ready for his big opportunity on the next job. Uh, we, we opened a bunch of packages yesterday. I got my level. I got my hard hat. Got my uh, big vest. Got sweaters for the whole team. And we're ready to roll. I hope a lot of ears are perked up. Johnson & Sons Paving is inviting me out to one of their job sites this summer, and that could be with your business. Book an appointment before May 31st, and you'll see old T out there with the crew. Johnson & Sons Paving has over two decades of experience and is ready for the challenge the winter will leave. Potholes. You see them everywhere. We all know that it's coming, and it causes damage to the cars, bad aesthetics, you name it. That's, I think, right up my alley. I think I'd be really good dumping a little asphalt in those potholes, leveling it off. Maybe I could put your car keys in there like Costanza and get Wildy's keys buried under there and then have to get you out there to jackhammer it up. Mm-hmm. The Johnson & Sons Paving team can help you with that as well. Just visit johnsonandsonspaving.com, and I'll start digging for my hard hat. Evan Cohen from Unsportsmanlike kicks off the 10 o'clock hour. That starts in two minutes, so stick around. It's Wilde and Tausch. Don't go anywhere. Another hour of Wilde and Tausch, presented by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin, is coming up next on ESPN Wisconsin, the ESPN app, and Wisconsin On Demand. Mark Tauscher here, and when I was on the hunt for a hot tub, I found Patio Pleasures, a locally owned family business. Patio Pleasures has a passion for making your home a place for recovery and relaxation. And that's why I'm excited about my new cold plunge from Patio Pleasures. They only showcase premium recovery and relaxation products, and that's how I know it's going to be great. Gear up for spring and check out Patio Pleasures' two incredible showrooms, Madison West and Sun Prairie. Broadcasting live from the Everlight Solar Studio, this is your Metro Kia of Madison Sports Center. Good morning, Madison and streamers everywhere. I'm Jesse Nelson, Sports Center, brought to you by Goodman's Jewelers, the diamond store of Madison for generations. Check them out, 220 State Street and online at goodmansjewelers.com. The Milwaukee Bucks in desperate need of a bounce back before they run out of time in the regular season. Hosting the best team in the NBA tonight at Pfizer Forum, Bucks Celtics, 6.30 tip time. Pre-game coverage starts at 6 after Rutledge and Hamilton right here on Madison's home of the Bucks, 100.5 ESPN. ESPN bet lists the Bucks as one and a half point home underdogs having lost four straight and six of their last seven games. But entering play today, the Bucks still in the number two position in the Eastern Conference playoff picture. The bad news, everybody's creeping up on them. The Orlando Magic, New York Knicks both one game back of the Bucks. Cleveland Cavaliers one and a half, Pacers two and a half back. Going to be tight here in the final stretch of the regular season, including two games against the Orlando Magic later this week. Again, Bucks celtics 6.30 tip tonight. Listen to it on 100.5 ESPN, nationally televised on TNT. Baseball, the Brewers nearly overcame an eight-run deficit yesterday, but fell 10-8 at the hands of the Cincinnati Reds. Two teams back at it tonight at Great American Ballpark. 5.40 first pitch. Metro Kia of Madison, Madison's trusted Kia dealer. Stop into Metro Kia on the east side of Madison or MetroKiaOfMadison.com. Hey, this is Eric Name of The Athletic. You're listening to Madison's Home of the Bucks, 100.5 ESPN, WTLX Monona, Madison, a good karma brand's radio station. I'm throwing caution. What's it gonna be? Tonight the winds of change are blowing wild and free. If I don't get out, out of this town, I just might be the one who finally Evan Cohen, what are you doing here on a Tuesday? 
You hear them every weekday across ESPN Wisconsin and across ESPN Radio nationally. On Unsportsmanlike, he joins us once a week. It is Evan Cohen on Wilding Tash. Evan, good morning. How are you? Jason, Mark, how are you guys? We're coming off a great appearance Super. last week. I figured we'd, we'd do it quicker this time. <laughs> right at Tuesday instead of Thursday. We were awesome on Thursday. Uh, hey, I don't want to uh, get too far into your personal life, but what time do you get up? What time do you get up in the morning to go to work? Uh, good question. Uh, you know, it's funny. Tim Legler asked me the same kind of question this morning because he literally walked in our studio, ESPN NBA analyst, and on our show, America's analyst, because kind of like Tausch, you just put anything up there for him and he can analyze it. It's, uh-huh. He's really remarkable mm-hmm. in that. Tausch and Legs would be excellent friends, actually. And that's a major compliment to Tausch, so maybe I should take that back. Okay. But he said to me, he said to me, because I'm sure you didn't watch the whole game, right? And I go, no, I did. And he was like, really? And I said, so last night, Exactly I do something what I, was I going. never do. Yeah, I do something I never do, which is between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. my time, I actually got in bed, rested for like an hour, hour and a half, and then got back up, did the pregame shower. Very tricky as to when you do the shower at night. You would do it pregame or halftime to stay awake for a game. Normally I do halftime. This time I did pregame. I wake up at 4 every morning. I got about an hour drive in, and I'm there sitting in hair and makeup at like 5.15, let's say. Sitting in hair and makeup, where so, they paint your hair. Is there any? At, so, at what point do you see when UConn has this thing wrapped that you say deuces? I'm calling it a night. A good question. So, what I do in that spot is I go in in my office, which is in the basement of my house, and I made sure I watch the game there so I don't fall asleep. With about four minutes to go in the game, when UConn, I remember the moment. When I realized, oh, there's no chance they're coming back because what UConn was doing off of offensive rebounds with a double-digit lead, they're so smart. They're like, we're not putting the ball back. We're just going to milk the clock. At that point, I knew it was over. I go back upstairs, watch the end in bed. Who cares if I fall asleep last four minutes in that spot? So, Evan, when you look at this, the fact that UConn has done this back-to-back and done it with different players – Is this the most impressive two-year run that you've seen? Because when Duke did it, it was the same cast. When uh, you can look at Florida, when they did it, same cast. Mm -hmm. Where do you rank this group with what they did? It's a great question. Now, I was living in Florida when Florida won back-to-back 06 and 07. I believe Florida would have pummeled this UConn team. I don't think there's any team in my lifetime outside of UNLV and Duke back in the day, maybe, that could have even come close to those Florida teams. And they had the ultimate winner and leader in Joe Kim Noah, who I absolutely love. I think this is such an interesting question because we were having this debate this morning, and I put it out at Upco Radio on Twitter. Do you realize they've won six titles in the last 25 years, which means their peers in, in men, on the men's side of sports would be Alabama football, the Patriots, and the Lakers as the only other teams that have won six times in the last 25 years. And if you look at those other ones, Alabama did it with Saban the whole time. New England did it with Belichick and Brady. Now, the Lakers have had different casts, but it was Kobe for five of them with Shaq slash Powell slash Phil Jackson. And then LeBron obviously had the one in the bubble. But UConn's done it with, like, all different pieces over the course of this time. And it confuses me because, like, what's the thread line to this? You could say it's Jim Calhoun. But, well, okay, you say, Danny, he, he wasn't a part of four of the six, Tausch. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, even yeah. even still to this day, if our school, the University of Wisconsin, wins a championship in any sport, I default to giving Barry Alvarez credit. That may not be right, but to me, he's the thread line to everything that is UW Athletics. Because even if you want to say, well, Chris McIntosh is in charge, well, yeah, who put him in charge? Right. Who did he play for? Right? right? There's a thread line to that. I don't know how to answer that question, Tausch, because it is such an anomaly to think you can win six times with no like continual thread line amongst those six teams. And not even that much of a thread line between your back-to-back championship teams the last two years. Correct. Correct. And to and so dominate the, the way they did. Dominant, too. Yeah, because even it's like, all right, so with, with what you guys are talking about on the majority of the bases, it's like, time like all right there are rogers teams and Forest teams but couch is the perfect example of the thread line they also played on the same teams those two right. guys and it was right. a handoff mm-hmm. oh there's rogers versus, versus love again a handoff of 
with so, those guys. It's so, crazy. Yeah. So, Evan, we've spent a lot of time talking about college football, and, and there's the report from The Athletic about the Super League. When you look at college basketball, Tausch and I spent some time yesterday talking about you know, the, the Caitlin Clark effect and the increased attention to the women's game and whether that will be sustained. When you look at college basketball, as a college basketball fan and as a Dick Bennett devotee like me, where do you yeah. think that game is at right now with the transfer portal and everything else? And is this, like, Alabama completely remade its roster from a year prior and went to its first Final Four. Is this the game that they are now playing? Is basically who can assemble the best team in the off season and then have it gel as quickly as possible to be a Final Four team? I think college basketball on the men's side has actually been revived. I think it was dead for multiple years. I even could argue it was dead a little bit last year, I, even though UConn won. I think right now what we're seeing, and I'll get to the women's part in a second because that's obviously amazing and way greater than the men's part, but the men's has had a little bit of a revival because I have never in the last five, six years had a moment where I'm thinking about next year's storylines in, in college basketball. NFL, we are literally thinking about, like, four years from now storylines. We're already thinking about, like, Caleb Williams' second contract. He hasn't been drafted yet, right? Like, we're, all, we're so far ahead. But now you're telling me I've got John Calipari versus Kentucky next year? You're telling me I got UConn for a three-peat? You're telling me I got the main event, Cooper Flagg, this kid in high school who's going to Duke that everyone is going to either love or hate? Those are three legit storylines. We haven't had that in God knows how long in college basketball. It's so much different than when we were growing up. And the women's game is fascinating because I think we will follow Caitlin Clark to the WNBA. I think in large part because of Caitlin Clark, we have a greater appreciation for Dawn Staley. I think Malaysia Full Wiley, the, the freshman on South Carolina, is going to be an absolute megastar. I think she's awesome. And there are Paige Beckers at UConn, Juju Watkins at USC. I'm name-dropping names in women's basketball and men's basketball in a way that I haven't in maybe ever. It, it has been totally revived. I thought it was dead for a long period of time. The transfer portal has helped because the thing about college basketball, in a weird way, guys, it should not matter if these guys make it to the pros. That's not the beauty of college basketball. Get to the pros as quickly as possible. College basketball needs to stand on, on its own with non-pros like it did forever with all the names we could probably talk about that we watched growing up, and we didn't care if they made it to the NBA or the WNBA. We only cared if they were good in college. It needs to be looked at as two separate entities. So let Cooper Flag go for a year and go pro, and let, you know, the, the, the Awara, whatever his name is, the guy on the bench at UConn be there for four years. Who cares? I don't care that he's not going to be in the NBA. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I mean, there are storylines, but I still, I just don't think the men's game is still going to be end of March to April. I don't think for as much as Calipari, when he goes back to Kentucky, it'll be a big game. But outside of that, all, you don't know who's going to be on any of these teams. Hurley said last night it was great that he had this long run because it, he avoided having to deal with the transfer portal. He doesn't even know who's going to be on his team next year. So there I, is, I, I, I think, agree, but there's trans, we love transactional stuff, don't we? And this gives us that in college basketball? Yeah, transactional with people we know, not with, like, yeah. marginal players that we don't really know. Well, okay, so I'll, I'll give you something that you're, you may hate, but, like, I was told by someone, and I have no idea if this is true, that Wisconsin had multiple people on their roster this year that, like, were already committed to other schools. Mm -hmm. That happens in your sport all the time, does it not, Tausch? I guarantee you, yeah. and I know we don't know them as much, but you don't think there are guys that you played with that knew they were going to be on a different team the next year? Yeah. No, they do. So, but it, yeah, and it yeah. makes the, the NFL's different. For sure, but I, I just think that this is more of a loyalty, and I was convinced that the men's – there are more storylines – because of Calipari, if you if you took the Calipari part of it out, I would disagree with you completely, but that part is fair. Before we get to the women's game and if they've reached their pinnacle, which I'd be fascinated to hear from you, how does Zach Eady look from an NBA standpoint? Can he play? Uh, Legs does not think so in terms of sustained success in the NBA. Um, I'll, I'll defer to him. 
on that, Jim Legler. I think he's going to be on a roster. I think we've had a revival of big men, right? I mean, I think Embiid and the Sixers are unbelievable right now. Jokic is an offensive champ. I have always loved Brooke Lopez. Not that I'm putting him on that level. Like, could he make himself a little bit quicker and a little bit better shooter? Maybe. The thing that was – I think that guy played his butt off in this tournament. I think he gave every mm-hmm. ounce of himself to this. The thing that was disturbing, not to get too technical, he couldn't go off of his opposite shoulder. Like, if you notice last night, Donovan yep. in the center was playing him one way, and he couldn't really go the other way. That's a problem for the NBA. Mm-hmm. you got to be able to go off of both shoulders. But, again, does it matter? You know his name. We ended up caring about him. He was a target for the opposition. He's big and imposing at seven foot four, and he was he gave us a more relevant final. I don't care. He should care, but I don't care if he doesn't go to the NBA and dominate. That doesn't matter to me as much because I look at it as two separate sports. Hmm. Uh, so eighteen point seven million people tuned in for the women's final on Sunday. Do you think there will ever be a women's final? that will get a bigger number than that? It's hard to say yes, but it's exciting that you can't say no. Right? Like, we're not 100% sure yet, I don't think, because we know more people now than we did then. What if, what if hypothetically, next year, you get undefeated UConn and undefeated South Carolina in the finals? No. Yeah, I'll be yeah. watching. I mean, but Jason, you were you were watching beforehand, right? To your credit, like I think right. it has to be count. the people that weren't right. watching I agree. beforehand. Yep. Mm-hmm. And and I think that yep. the thing that's awesome is I watched this with my wife and my seven year old daughter, and my wife at one point said to me, "I know we're all supposed to be in on Iowa, but I really like South Carolina." And I said, "That's the point of why this is awesome because you can like you actually can like right now as you're getting like accustomed with this both." Ultimately, you can't, but in the moment for, like, your entrance point, it's okay to like multiple players and teams. Ultimately, take your squad, right? I said to my daughter, do you want to go to a WNBA game? And she said yes. Then I looked up how far it was from my house, and I'm going to say no. But anyway, um, (laughs) so I think it's hard to say it's going to surpass 18.7 because Caitlin Clark became a phenom, but I guess now the opening is, We've seen what a women's basketball player phenom can do, so thus, could we have another one? Maybe. Do I need to be the one here that says I wouldn't be as excited to watch undefeated UConn and undefeated South Carolina as I was to watch Caitlin Clark in three games last week? Why, Jesse? The brand of basketball and the phenomenon that it was, that like it's the first time that there's been an athlete in that sport that's captivated the country the way that she did, and it can never be replicated because she was the first. Well, sure, but that means you don't actually like the sport, which is fine. You can say that. That means you just like the, the phenomenon. Phenom as- yeah, the phenomenon. That's a better way of saying it. Thank you. And by the way, that's okay, right? Like, I have to be honest. Sorry to Gabe Knightsel of Jen, Gabe, and Chewy. I don't know that I love golf. I love watching Tiger. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I can watch right. two random tennis players play. I don't. It doesn't have to be Fed and Nadal or Djokovic or Serena and Venus. I could watch random tennis matches. Not for a long time, but I could watch it. You give me a <laughs> random golf tournament without Tiger, yeah. I'm having a tough time getting into it. Right, and that that's yeah. why... That's why your point about her having a tiger-like effect is the why Tausch and I spent time on it yesterday, is that now if if you don't have – there are other great players in women's basketball. You mentioned it, right? Sydney and I have been watching our share of women's college and WNBA basketball for multiple years now. Her favorite player is Sabrina Ionescu, who now plays awesome. for the New York Liberty, right? She was a phenomenal player, and yet – as good as she is, I mean, we saw her get attention for going head-to-head with Steph Curry in the three-point shooting contest, but she did not create the phenomenon that Caitlin Clark did. And so no. there can be more great players. Paige, I love watching Paige Beckers. Like, obviously she has dealt with a lot of adversity with her injuries and everything else, but she was the one during that game that Sydney and I were watching because 
Sydney plays that position, and she wanted to see how she played. And so, to me, as great as Caitlin Clark is, to Jesse's point, I'm not sure that phenomenon can be replicated, and if it can't, I don't think those numbers can be replicated. And that's coming okay, from so, someone who likes women's basketball. Right, but as you just as we said, Jason, like you're the bad example because you, they already had you, right? It's Jesse who they need in this spot. But just to appease Taos and maybe wake him up a little bit because he's bored by me as normal, um, is, there an, is there an example of a Wisconsin phenomenon at a high level. I don't mean Sam Congato. I don't mean John Bryant for the Badgers with an unbelievable three-point barrage, you know, against Purdue, whatever it was. I'm saying where the person took over the state and remained at a high level, i.e. Caitlin Clark, out of, I don't want to say out of nowhere, but I mean, would you call Rogers a phenomenon? Would you call Love a phenomenon? Would CC Sabathia for that run a phenomenon? Is there a version of this in Wisconsin sports history? Well, love uh, is a Frank? phenomenon right now. Maybe, maybe Frank Kaminsky might be that guy. Oh, good one. Player That's of the a year. Great one. That's a great one. I think that would be my my because I, I don't think you could say Ron. Ron did it for a long period of time. I think Frank would be the the best answer that you could put on that one. See? And you know him playing with Decker, obviously, and then Gosser. Um, nobody else, really, I don't think. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that's, that's an interesting one. I don't think there's anybody that ever hit a big three for them against Oregon or Michigan. So I think, yeah, you're right about that. CeCe Sabathia, too, would, would be the, that three-month stretch where every time he pitched was like it, it was its yeah. own special event. And he loaned Tausch's sure. pants. That's true. That is true. Was Giannis, was Giannis ever that? I mean, was he too good for too, like, was it ever phenomenon-like? you think no because he wasn't a great I, player yet and then it was such a steady suddenly. growth that i don't think i don't think he could do it uh evco before you go i am nervous about this bucks team they can't beat anybody i know that they're a veteran team but they look old they look slow do you think if you had a pick that they could make it to the nba finals or get knocked out in the first round which way you as an expert in the nba like me which way are you going <laughs> so now, here's the tricky thing. Can I, I want to answer this question with a question for discussion. Isn't it now in their best interest for them to drop to the three seed so they avoid Philadelphia or Miami in the first round? Well, they, they don't need to work at dropping because they can't beat anybody. <laughs> and, okay, and, but I'd like, still, I, and still avoid Boston in the second round, right? Yeah, and I know, by the way, Indiana's had their number all season, right? So it's not like I'm like giving yep. you a better alternative here. I am running out of um, ammo to defend them here, as I have, and you guys know I have, because every time I try to defend them, they lose to another terrible team, and my defense keeps coming back to, well, at least they don't have to play terrible teams in the postseason, and maybe they can flip a switch. But mm. you guys have every right to sit there and say, what gives you any thought that they can flip a switch? And my stupid answer is, I saw a team do it last year in Miami. But that's not my loss. Right, so it's a dumb, it's, it's a completely ridiculous and absurd thought to say that. And Tausch, yes, you do know the NBA inside and out, and I know you do. And you joke about that, but you do. Are you? Have uh, you given up? I know I do. I know. Uh, have you given up on the switch flip? Is the switch flip done? Are we on a dimmer? What what lighting setting are we using right now with the Milwaukee Bucks? Uh, it's dim. There is a chance that it Giannis just goes bananas that you could flip it back on. But I just uh, – there's so many holes uh, on defense. They can't guard anybody. And that's what makes me think that they can't. Would this be Not a more whack, though. Not All whack. Right, ready? How about this one? Yeah. This is a good question, I think. More disappointing. If the Bucks lose in the first round this year or the final game of the season, a home loss to the Lions for the Packers-Rodgers last game? Uh, Rodgers last game. We didn't know it was his last game, obviously. Or maybe you guys did, but mm -hmm. the masses didn't. Yeah. Uh, okay. Rodgers' last game against Detroit, that is that is still, I think, one of those. I can't believe that happened. I can believe that the Bucks will get beat in the first round. All right. Fair enough. Evan, we got a lot of good questions from you. Thank you for that. Uh, positive I'm reinforcement. Just trying to do, 
I know Jesse. I know Jesse wants to stay up all hours of the night doing show notes and questions. I just figured during the twenty minutes I'm on, I'll give him notes for the rest of the week, make it easier for him. Uh, so I find go- it really funny. I find it really funny that for two people that are very different, you and Evan, you guys approach things in a very similar way. I ask a question of Evan, and very rarely do I get an answer without a question very similar to how you do it. Yeah, you two I, are a we, lot we, more alike than I think you guys would ever. Imagine. No, I think we know we're both that we have a lot of similarities, and and yet we still had our um, and you both don't like that you have those similarities. That's I know the fun he does. I know I don't blame him for not liking it. Oh, there's uh, some there are some similarities that I like with Jason and I. <laughs> Others that I may pass on. Uh, at last thing before I uh, ship out your uh, hangers Wait, Jason, that you Jason, bought on Jason. Facebook. Oh, yeah, wait, we never talked about this. How, what is wrong? Wait a minute. What is going on with the hanger sale? I need the update on the Jason Wilby hanger sale. Yeah. How many hangers have you sold for how much, and why did you do that? Because I need to get rid of them, and I, I do need well, a, 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 those hangers? I you need another. Oh, Jason Wilby does. I did need an additional uh, revenue stream. They're not, they were nicer than the ones you get from your dry cleaner. Uh, so the 400 or 398 hangers did go for 50 bucks, and now I just finished wow. selling the wooden hangers. I had a hundred of those that we needed to clear out, and I just sold those the other day for 50 more bucks. So that's you know that's money Ouch. in the girls' college funds. Wait, this is now wow. a new bit. <laughs> What's Wildy selling next? Yeah, we should. We could put like I. I think you started blocking because I'm not getting the text from people words, that you're still selling start, stuff like like I did when you sent the the wire hangers out. Yeah, can we get him, Jason? Can you sell toilet paper? Put toilet paper on eBay, not used, but can you put toilet paper on eBay or Facebook, Facebook Marketplace to see if it's used? It, it can be sold. Toilet paper. Yes, uh, I think we should do a bit every week. You sell something, and we'll predict if it sells. Okay. Yes. Uh, right now, the most popular item I'm trying to get rid of is a unicorn like head that you put on, like if you were on the Masked Singer that Sydney had for a Halloween costume. So maybe that'll be the next one that makes the Wait, cut. Wait, do you have the inventory in front of you of all of the items that are up for sale from the Wilby House? I do. To the hangers? Yeah, they're around the corner from my uh, little basement studio. Where Why I, don't you where wear that show. unicorn head? Wear the unicorn yeah, head for the next segment. promotion. Is this like a warehouse? Yes. Do you have like an outdoing <laughs> area? Dude, you, you don't want to know what he's all got down there, man. It is a, I he want is to a, know. Jason, he is a hoarder. Give us a couple more items. Shipping and receiving. <laughs> Jason, give us a couple more items of what's for sale. Come on, Jason. Let's all right, we've it. got, uh, let's see, we've got a used set of girls' uh, junior golf clubs because the girls have moved up to grown-up sized golf clubs. That's not bad. That's not bad. I- I'm okay with that. That'll sell. Couch, that'll sell. Will it sell? Yep. Here on Will Be a Couch. <laughs> Brought to you by AmFam, Pella Windows and Doors, and more. Go ahead. Uh, uh, the next item in our Gruber Law says one item, that's all, uh, auction. <laughs> I actually had a friend who uh, retired as a music teacher, and I had all these musical instruments. So my most recent big sale was uh, a used, uh, vi- is it a cello? The big, like, it looks like a... Yeah, oh, cello's, yeah, a, big cello's a big Oboe. one. Oboe. Sold a cello. Oboe's sold a big uh, one. a xylophone. Uh, okay. So that, that went. Uh, what else do we got? We've got some uh, American Girl items that we need to get out of here. Uh, what are some... you making a year selling your junk? Like, how much money I, do you make I selling have not, your junk? I have not put together a uh, an Excel program to figure that out yet. I don't think you're selling your junk, Douch, but maybe you're on the house. <laughs> well, that's, that's thanks for the big, strong sales pitch. That's a different segment. What are you segment. making selling your junk? <laughs> uh, Evan, oh I'll, my God. I'll have a few items for you when you join us next week. Thank you. All right, guys. See ya. That is Evan Cohen. You hear him every weekday across ESPN Wisconsin and across ESPN Radio on Unsportsmanlike. Um, do you really? I don't. I don't know how the audio. I think you should wear the unicorn hat for the I next will, segment. I will put it on for the next segment. I don't know how the audio will be. We may have to remove it mid-segment, but I will. Yeah. I will put it on. Uh, if you're watching on, if you're not watching on video, now would be the time to make the switch to YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter to locate that. 
More and one unicorn head later. Next, it's Wilde and Tausch. This is Wilde and Tausch, presented by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Call Gina Della from Pella today, 855-PELLA-WI, and online at PellaWI.com slash radio. Beautify your entertainment space with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Hi, this is Gina Della from Pella. Turn your ordinary space into something extraordinary with brand new Pella Windows. Plus, getting the perfect windows and doors for your home has never been easier. Right now, get 0% interest for up to 36 months, or no down payment. Payment, no interest and no payments for up to 18 months if you book before April 30th. Take ownership of your living space and make it a place worth living with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Since 1956, Holman Lindsay Paints has been making paint in Wisconsin for Wisconsin. Because of their commitment to making great paint for Wisconsinites, Holman Lindsay has grown over the years to 26 locations in this great state. Headquarters in Sun Prairie with a state-of-the-art facility, Holman Lindsay has the paints you need to make your job better. From do-it-yourself to professional, Holman Lindsay has paint for everyone. Visit one of their local locations today in Madison, Sun Prairie, Middleton, and Janesville. The area's best high school sports coverage is Zimbrick Honda's presentation of Prep Mania. And after four overtimes, we finally figure out the first wow. team in the Division I state final. 99 to 95, our score. <laughs> Arrowhead Warhawks. Zimbrick Honda's Prep Mania is also brought to you by Canopy Wealth Management, Pasquale's Cantina, UW Credit Union, Stoughton Trailers, the GRB Academy, and Stoughton Health. Ben Brust here to tell you about the Princeton Club. I joined the Princeton Club because I was looking for a place I could invest in my health, and the environment and the community I have felt has made it so easy for me to incorporate it into my everyday life. It doesn't matter where you're at in your fitness journey because they have something to offer everyone. It also goes beyond fitness. From the moment you walk in the club to the moment you walk out, there is a togetherness felt throughout the members and staff that keeps you going for your better tomorrow. Don't wait any longer and get started on your fitness journey today at PrincetonClub.net. That's PrincetonClub.net. When it comes to security for your home and family, you want a winner, and we found one when we placed our trust with J&K Security Solutions. This is Greg Gard. Kim and Jeff hit the game-winning shot for us with the Control 4 Home Technology System. Home or away, from our smartphones, we can open the garage door, dim the lights, turn on the TV, as well as arm the security system. That's convenience as well as peace of mind. Let J&K Security Solutions do for your home or business like they've done for us. Call 255-5799 or online at jksecurity.com. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we get you outdoors because we get you. When you're ready to get out and prep your yard for spring, we get you the right products at the right prices. Like all new Estate Premium 4-in-1 Lawn Treatment, $59.99 with both pre- and post-emergent crabgrass killer in one application. 36-pound bags of Estate Weed and Feed, only $34.99. And 20-pound bags of Bio-Advanced Grub Killer Plus, $29.99 after sale and mail-in rebate. We get you outdoors because we get you at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. The GRB Rays have established themselves as one of the top baseball programs in the Midwest and the country. GRB Academy offers training programs for players of all ages and skill levels. Learn from some of the best baseball coaches in the area and find the program that fits your training goals and your schedule. Spots are filling up fast, so visit grbacademy.com to sign up now. That's grbacademy.com. GRB Academy, baseball for the serious player. Hey, Drew Scott here, and I'm Jonathan Scott, reminding you that life's better with a home policy from American Family Insurance. They can help you get just the right protection at just the right price and help you save when you bundle home and auto. Kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It'll be just right for you. We love a custom build. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Get a quote and find an agent at AmFam.com. Products not available in every state. Visit AmFam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. The Milwaukee Bucks. The Boston Celtics. Catch and shoot three. Malik Beasley rips the cords and splashes another three hole for the Bucks. Tonight on Madison home of the Bucks, 100.5 ESPN. This ain't a good time, but when is it ever? I know the perfect time, and maybe that's never. So don't you dare leave me now. Throw my heart on the ground. Cause tonight ain't the night for sorrow. But you can hurt me tomorrow. You can hurt me. You can hurt me. You can hurt me. You can hurt me. 
Continuing on Wilde and Tausch. I'm not sure what the conversational segue is to (laughs) my unicorn head. You sound good. It's terrifying. Yeah, what is that? uh, So what is that on sale for? Like, what are you selling? Ten bucks. We got a listener for ten bucks. I think it's overpriced. This looks like it's straight out of a horror movie. Did you make that yourself? That's not professionally made, right? You guys, it looks like somebody like no, it's a it, fourth it, grader was like cutting that made. open because no, it's all, this is high quality. No way. Yeah, come on, look at this thing. Oh, the, 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 the horn, horn is, is nice. very nice, and it looks. But I'm saying the eye holes. It looks like a uh, like a second grader cut them. <laughs> like I, they're not I, even. I would... I would They're be not offended, equal. but I like I like bought this it at like, like Walmart. It looks like you have a black eye on both sides. Like you, you got in a unicorn I, fight. I, I it looks like the there's a solar misleading. eclipse on your face. I, I think the video is misleading. Patch. So uh, we were in Madison a few years ago, and Sydney was younger, and you know Maddie, Maddie and Paula are wired similarly. They're very they're, 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 they don't do goofy things. They're very responsible. And Sid and I like to go for the laugh. So we were meeting Paula and Maddie at a restaurant on the west side of Madison. And we had to run and get a couple of things. We were staying in a hotel, so we had to pick up uh, some Tylenol and a couple of other things at Walmart. And we saw this thing, and it was, like, clearanced out. And Sid thought it would be funny to walk into the restaurant wearing it. So I was like, all right, that joke's worth the uh, 10 bucks or whatever it was. I think it was like 7.99. And so we got it. But we wore it that day and then it's never been worn again. So it's like new condition. So anybody who's interested Come on, it's funny. This isn't funny? No, I love it. Is there a full costume with it or is it just the mask? No, it's just the head. Ah. I think if you had a full costume, you'd get some good money for that. I have a few of those, too. Did you want me to go get those? I've got a Bucky Badger. I've got uh, Elmo and Cookie Monster and Grover in oh, the garage. please come back next segment dressed as Elmo. Just wait. You have please. Grover, like a full-on Grover costume? Yeah. So many, many years yeah, ago, I be- think... before Paul and I had kids, uh, they had – Paul has got some nieces and nephews who are now, like, in college. But, like, for their birthdays, I found these costumes on – ebay and they were big sesame street fans and so for each of their birthdays i came and did a different character so i did my elbow voice and then oh cookie monster etc that was pretty good right <laughs> so Jesse? not in the unicorn head <laughs> now you're that's even every creepier fear i thought All right, I I'm gonna, can i take this off now have we made our point sure yeah, I think that's it's kind of warm, sell. frankly. So you have all of those. You have Big Bird. You have Snuffleupagus. No, I don't have. I I do not have the entire complement of characters. No Bert. No Ernie. Although I would like them. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog. We don't have him either. So, <laughs> I don't know if you're bemused, <laughs> or concerned, or troubled. Why, why don't you? No, bring... it's 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 a different side that I didn't know you had. Why don't you kind of suppress yourself? To be clear, because I can feel the slippery slope on which I stand, Mm -hmm. this is not a furry thing. There's no Mm -hmm. sort of Mm behind-the-scenes dress-up going on at our house. The Sesame Street characters are on a high shelf in our garage in storage bins and have probably not been out in 15 years. Without getting too too personal. Paul is not into this sort of thing. There has never been any um, getting at it in <laughs> a lot of no. stuff There's going no on. Malfeasians Zero. with a Grover costume. No. With that unicorn head. None. Never. None. None. Whoa, None. That's not, I'm not here to discuss other people's activities, but for Paul and I, that is not what uh, trips anyone's trigger. That seems that that's a that's a realm that I have no interest in, nor does she. And the fact that Josh Dimaggio claims that numerous this thought, costumes just sitting around 
for 15 years in your basement. I sh- no, in the garage. But, yeah, and I should probably sell those, too. Like, I suppose at some point, like, maybe I'll be a grandfather, but I don't know if I'll – like, are the Sesame Street characters still relevant? Like, sure. are they? Po- oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't have yeah. young children anymore. Are they still popular? Yeah, People still watch. Elmo's There's a big follow on Twitter. Elmo asked everybody how they were doing a few months ago, and yeah, it blew got up. More than he bargained for, exactly. Uh, I could probably find time to get Elmo down from uh, the shelves in the garage and bring him out at some point. Uh, maybe I could wear it on Friday to Bucket Honey's. How do you think that would go over? Fun. I, I want you to do a one-on-one interview with Mark Murphy at the tailgate tour, dressed as Elmo. Uh, I don't uh, foresee that as being an option, but I will say this. Uh, I, I do think it would be a fun shtick to, like, sit down with, like, are there players on today's roster that would play along with being interviewed by Elmo? I think there's some. Yeah. yeah. I think Jaden yeah. Reed. Jaden Reed, who was going around the locker room late in the season wearing Aaron Jones's son's plastic costume Packers helmet and doing interviews in it. I think Jaden Reed seems like the kind of guy that would get a kick out of that. I don't know if he's going to okay. buy the ten dollar uh, unicorn head, but I think he'd be interested. Would Lafleur do it? Good question. Ooh. Yes, I think he would. So if I have Matt Lafleur meet me at the Tundra Trio, yep. and we have Maddie Hayes come up with her trusty video camera, and we do a video interview with me as Elmo. I would say this. Maybe before some of the other malfeasance that came, that occurred at his expense, maybe he might have <laughs> been more open to that. I'm not sure he's interested in any goofiness uh, with us these days. Just Why yet. are you always trying to stir stuff up, Jason? Um, one of the drawbacks of the unicorn head, and we need to move on. <laughs> That's probably it, a good idea. Yeah, I, this whole thing <laughs> went in a can't... direction I did not You told me to put it going. on. This is your... I didn't talk to you about telling us about your fetishes before. I, I did. Like, I didn't now bring see, that up. That, that's Whoa, not... Nelly. I don't... No, I didn't bring... I didn't... Well, you're, you're right, but I don't know many 48, 50, however old you are. 52, right? I am, yes. How old are you? 50. I don't know many 52-year-olds that have five to six full-on fur costumes uh, in their in their basement. Garage. Closed up, Garage. not used. <laughs> uh, and again, uh, I'm not entirely... <laughs> Not entirely sure. It's not like I'm wearing them on a regular basis. I, I I think the time has probably come to list those on Facebook Marketplace, too. And then everyone wins. They can see it. Uh, if I think Facebook you should just me. jump in full costume and drive in your car down to Bucket Honey's on Friday as in dangerous. Elmo. I would have to take the Elmo head off, and then you're ruining for kids that might be passing me uh, in the left ask, lane. Ask the count how many games Chris Middleton's going to be out. One, two, three... But, uh, 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 huh, how many Coors Lights might we have? Uh, one, two, three Coors Lights. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I, I, after this conversation, I think we could all use a Coors Light brewed with a three-step cold process, cold lager, cold filtered, and it's cold packaged, so it's made to chill. Born in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. In 1978, Coors Light is refreshing. It's crisp. It's only 102 calories. That's why it is Coors Light in my hand. When I need a moment to chill, Subber is sponsored by Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. We will shift gears back to football or something that is not related to. You requested this. You asked Uh, me to go get the unicorn head. I thought that part was fun. Uh, I did not anticipate you going into your whole Furby collection. That I did not know. First of all, for those that are into that lifestyle, I mean, furry, not Furby. Secondly, I am not part of that group. Despite what you may think right now. Elmo wants to know what position will tickle your draft fancy. <laughs> we need a lineman. More next. That's Wildey and Tausch. This is Wildey and Tausch, driven by Zimbrick Chevrolet in Sun Prairie on 100.5 ESPN. See their full inventory at ZimbrickChevrolet.com. Mark Tauscher here for Chalmers Jewelers. I've been a big fan of Scott and Garrett and the whole team at Chalmers Jewelers for years now. I go there, my friends go there, and most importantly, my wife loves it whenever I get her something from Chalmers Jewelers. What's right around the corner? 
Mother's Day. Show some love to the incredible women in your life and stop at Chalmers Jewelers, the place to go for that perfect gift. I recommend Chalmers Jewelers in Middleton and Madison. Chalmers Jewelers in Middleton and Madison. Free Food Friday on ESPN Madison is brought to you by Vintage Brewing Company. Whether you're looking to get carry-out, delivery, or dine-in, Vintage Brewing has lots of great options on their menu. Vintage Brewing Company prides themselves on being a great place to hang out and enjoy classic Midwestern hospitality. Vintage Brewing Company has multiple award-winning beers, so be sure to try one the next time you're in. Head to VintageBrewingCompany.com to make a reservation today. That's VintageBrewingCompany.com. You ever have one of those days when you just couldn't come up with the right answer? Well, I know one answer that pretty much solves all problems. Ice cream. Yeah, it's the answer to everything, right? And right now, at Quick Trip, our rich, creamy, straight from our dairy, Nature's Touch, one gallon pails of ice cream are just $4.99. Yeah, now that's an answer worth digging into. Come on, be a problem solver. Bring home some fresh, delicious Nature's Touch ice cream, only from Quick Trip. What is a better buying experience? Well, you're minutes away from a better buying experience at Simden Chevy in Mount Horeb. Jim Rutledge here. To me, a better buying experience is a personal experience. That's what Dan and his sales team have set up at Simden Chevy in Mount Horeb. You're going to have the experience that you're looking for. You're going to define what that better buying experience is for you, and they're going to get you in the vehicle that you need and that you want, whether it's new or new to you. So when you're looking for a better buying experience, go to Simden Chevy in Mount Horeb. Are you in need of expert exterior renovations? Look no further than Ridgetop Exteriors. For over 22 years, we've been the trusted name in roofing, siding, windows, doors, and gutter replacements. With a track record of excellence on our Google reviews, we take pride in transforming houses into dream homes. Visit us today at RidgetopExteriors.com for a free consultation. That's RidgetopExteriors.com. Ridgetop Exteriors, your trusted local affordable partners. Attention business owners and executives. Looking for a bank that's invested in your community as you are? Look no further than Starion Bank. As a Dane County community bank, Starion offers competitive deposit and loan rates while actively supporting local initiatives. Visit a business banker at one of our convenient branches in Middleton, Monona, and Sun Prairie. Starion Bank, full service business banking, lending, and cash management. As you're putting your spring calendar together, we'd love to have you join us Saturday, May 18th for Marco Siki's sixth annual Casting for Kids Fishing Tournament to support the American Family Children's Hospital, UW Carbone Cancer Center. We're on the Madison Chain of Lakes early, then back at the Alliant Energy Center for 2.30 happy hour, dinner, and live and silent auctions with cool autographed hockey items, guided tours, and a brand new fishing boat. There's even more on our website, castingforkids.org. Help us help the kids, castingforkids.org. Protect your dream home with American Family Insurance. And you can weather any storm. You'll also save up to 25% by bundling home, auto, and life. American Family Insurance. Get a quote. Find an agent at AmFam.com. Products not available in every state. Discounts may not apply to all coverages on an auto or home policy. Discounts do not apply to life insurance policies. Visit AmFam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating companies, American Family Life Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. From the preps. Russell oh. spins his way into the paint with contact, finishes, and a foul. That was pretty. To the pros. Beverly launches from three, and he knocks it down. The biggest games play on 100.5 ESPN. Said 
that I am unwilling to step outside my comfort zone, regardless of what you may think about my furry interests, that I did that on live radio and uh, video stream. Uh, Jesse, I know we got a, a, a YouTube comment recently. Do you guys even talk Packers anymore? Uh, did we get any derogatory or uh, disconcerting text messages or YouTube comments <laughs> while Uni the Unicorn joined the program briefly and we discussed uh, my uh, costume collection? There were a few skeptics. YouTube seemed to like it, so we got that going for us. Uh, Geriad, Frenchie in Canton, Ohio. Can you imagine LaFleur's reaction if Wildy just walked in with the unicorn head on unannounced saying nothing and just sitting in the front row staring right at him at a press conference. Yeah, I I think Mike McCarthy might have had some fun with that. Okay? I think that's I think there's the possibility that Big Mike would have had some fun with it. I don't know. Like I've got a good relationship with LaFleur, but again, I don't he does not want to be part of any of our tomfoolery uh after some things that have happened in the past with others, I I would predict. Uh, like what? I not nothing specific. Just just maybe a, a few things that may have happened last summer. Uh, I know what you did last summer. Uh, so I don't see that as being an option. If we had unicorn trivia or Sesame Street trivia queued up right now, hey, hang on, hang on, hang uh, on. <laughs> I was trying to get up. In case we, you couldn't tell, we, I was trying to move on, Jesse. We ha- no, we have to address Matt and West Bed's text. I locked my keys out of my car when I was dressed up as an M&M. Two cops came and laughed at me while they got the car unlocked. As cars drove by, they were honking. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just imagine two cops on the side of the road with a guy dressed as an M&M? Uh, I could picture it, and it's funny. That's for sure. Um, Matt, I, f- I feel your pain uh, because I feel like maybe I've overstepped my bounds here on today's Wilty and Tosh. Let's play some trivia, shall we? Jesse, today is Tuesday. Fetishes. <laughs> Fetish Tuesday. I think that's Friday. Rex usually. Ryan. <laughs> Rex Ryan might be the first. Foot yeah, fetish, fetish Friday. Friday you're right. Uh, Jesse, what's today's category? What caller would you like? Well, as was on the show sheet, we were going to talk NBA right before this trivia, so it's NBA Tuesday Trivia. Questions about the Nas- National Basketball Association. Yeah, right on topic. Uh, we'll take uh, caller 7. Caller 7, 844 770 844-770-3776. <sighs> We all make mistakes. More next. We'll play trivia. It's Will T. It's The 2024 NFL Draft on ESPN Radio. Are you ready? Live from the heart of downtown Detroit, Michigan. The NFL Draft is now officially open. The countdown rolls on. The 2024 NFL Draft on ESPN Radio, ESPN, and on ABC. Mark Tauscher here to tell you a little bit more about Everlight Solar. We all know that electricity costs are on the rise. That's why you need to talk to my friends over at Everlight Solar. Their local team here in Madison is here to keep it simple. From your no-cost consultation to solar panel installation, the team at Everlight Solar will be with you every step of the way. Not only will they help you save money, but by switching to solar, you're also helping save the planet. Everlight Solar, a proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. Check them out at everlightsolar.com. You, ra, ra. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin present your Badger Minute. Here's Alex Strofe. This Badger Minute brought to you by Stoughton Trailers. Big trailers and big opportunity at Stoughton Trailers. Learn more about why a career at Stoughton Trailers might be for you. Go to stojobs.com. Former Wisconsin men's basketball coach Bo Ryan is headed to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame announced over the weekend. Ryan, who led the Badgers to -to back-to-back Final Fours during his time as head coach, reacted to the news on ESPN with Reese Davis and Jay Billis. I coached in junior high, high school, NAIA, Division III, and then Division I. So my my love for the game is on paper with 42 years of trying to help young people find a better path. Ryan will officially be inducted this August alongside 12 other inductees. Badger Minutes on ESPN Wisconsin are brought to you by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Schedule an appointment online today at PellaWI.com.
Hey, it's Hunter Vaughn. ESPN Madison and Zimbra Honda are celebrating the area's best high school sports stories with the Game Changers of the Month. Follow ESPN Madison on social media to see teams making an impact in their community. Nominate your local team today at ESPNMadisonGameChangers.com. LabCorp Clinical Trials is changing to a new name. Fortria. While the name may be different, Fortria combines decades of great experience and professionalism with new opportunities for clinical trial participation. It's more than a mission and more than a new name. Fortria is dedicated to moving healthcare forward. To learn more about the future of healthcare and upcoming clinical trials, visit us at FortriaClinicalTrials.com. That's F O R T R E A ClinicalTrials.com. Ben Brust here to tell you about the Princeton Club. I joined the Princeton Club because I was looking for a place I could invest in my health, and the environment and the community I have felt has made it so easy for me to incorporate it into my everyday life. It doesn't matter where you're at in your fitness journey because they have something to offer everyone. It also goes beyond fitness. From the moment you walk in the club to the moment you walk out, there is a togetherness felt throughout the members and staff that keeps you going for your better tomorrow. Don't wait any longer and get started on your fitness journey today at PrincetonClub.net. That's PrincetonClub.net. From the biggest plays on the court to the comments made in the locker room after an in-depth recap of every Bucks game in six minutes. No more, no less. Bucks in six provides game recaps for every game. Hear the high-flying dunks from Giannis. Puts it on the floor, spins down the lane, and plunges it through. Or the Let's deep see. threes from Dane. Dane time has arrived with 107. Bucks in six on the Bucks Plus Audio Network. Find it now on Bucks.com slash plus or on Spotify, Apple, and wherever you get your podcasts. Good Karma Brands is proud to be an equal opportunity employer. Our policy is to provide equal opportunity employment, development, and advancement to all current and potential teammates. If you are an organization that maintains a job bank, provides employment information, or gives job referrals, you may request to be placed on the station's mailing list for future career opportunities. To learn more about careers at Good Karma Brands, please email careers at goodkarmabrands.com. Hi, I'm Madison Money Guy, Christian Finfrock with Retirement Income Strategies. And what sets us apart is we're an independent, family-run office. We help clients like you understand the financial world and build a portfolio that's in your best interest. To learn more, go to madisonmoneyguy.com. We're on the Bucks. With this team, the way they travel on the road and how they're built. Because we're on Wisconsin sports. You think Doc thinks they're winning a championship? Nobody covers the Bucks like 100.5 ESPN. I said go, baby, go, go, go. Trivia, not fetish trivia, not Sesame Street trivia, not unicorn trivia, which is good news for Dan in Brothertown, also known as Yote Dan in Brothertown, in great honor of places, great places, South Dakota. of the great state of South Dakota and the University of South Dakota. Dan, good morning. How are you? Doing great, guys. Doing great. You still got some uh, some ground to catch up. Jackrabbit Mom is a little bit ahead of Yote Dan. So it's good that There's you're no playing doubt. today. There's no doubt. Yeah, but you can I close the gap. I'm going to get there. I respect I'm get it. There. Yeah, we respect <laughs> it. All right. You can argue South Dakota's got some room to cover against South Dakota State over the years, too. Yeah, but combined, wow. South Dakota, the number one state on the <laughs> show not named Wisconsin. Clearly. Yeah, Jesse, sure. yeah, Jesse no nobody asked that. you to talk. Jesse. <laughs> what? Wow. Last time South Dakota won anything, that was when those fossils in the ground were still above ground. Oh. Jeez. Great places. Great places. South Dakota. Well, the mood has certainly shifted from Elmo yeah, and it's gotten a little uh, furry. Things have gotten a little furry. Oh, hey, Harry, maybe some, someday the South, maybe someday the South Dakota women will make it to the Sweet Sixteen like the Coyotes, baby. Yeah, good, oh, good work. sick burn, come back. nice work. Some good uh, battles going. All right, on here. can we play trivia, please, before oh, this devolves know. any further? <laughs> uh, the category is NBA Tuesday. Even though uh, our talk of the NBA was limited during a brief appearance uh, or brief discussion with Evan Cohen, so question one. 
Dan, is this. Which team has clinched the best record in the NBA this season? Is it the Boston Celtics, the Oklahoma City Thunder, or anybody playing the Bucks the last two weeks? Am I right? <laughs> That'd be the Celtics. Indeed. I wonder who played tonight for them at the Bucks game. Question two, Tausch. All right, entering play today, which of these teams would be competing in the NBA's play-in tournament next week by finishing 7th to 10th in its conference standings? Is it Indiana, the Lakers, or the Mavericks? Uh, I'm going to go with the Lakers. Yes, sir. Two for two. Let's see if Yote Dan can deliver a perfect day. Question three. Which of these teams is not entering play today in the top four of its respective conference standings? And it not has a very furry mascot. Not to throw, not to give any extra hints, but a very furry mascot. You just can't, just can't let it go. Okay. Uh, not in the top four in the West or the East. Is it the Orlando Magic, the Los Angeles Clippers, or the Phoenix Suns? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I thought the Magic? same thing. That doesn't sound like a furry mascot to me. Okay, Magic, Suns, or what's the other one? The Clippers. I'm going to go with the Clippers. Oh. Tausch was thinking about the old Phoenix Suns gorilla. Yep. And it oh, is indeed right. the Phoenix Suns. He used to dunk and stuff. Do they still have him? Very. Uh, he, they have to be. He was a great mascot. I mean, what a physical. I don't know Specimen. if there's a more physical mascot out there. Yeah. Bango. Uh, all right. Oh, the Dan. Fanatic would like to have a word. No, the, let me tell you something. Comment Phoenix Suns. About Jara yeah, go ahead, Yo. Yeah, go ahead, Yo. A football this dude conversation. Was voted captain. This, vote, this dude was voted captain in 2021. He missed 13 games that year because he got hurt. The next year, he was not voted team captain. Mm -hmm. And without a doubt in my mind, that has started the downhill trend of Alexander. Uh, yeah, I, you know what? I won't disagree, but I think that injury has changed the way he played. I mm -hmm. think his shoulder injury, he was not, he was such a physical ball hawk and that changed, but I, there's no doubt that injury set him back. And then all of those things that you talk about, the captaincy and everything else, he was one of those guys that was one of the leaders. I think he can still be there, but he was not the same tackler once he busted his shoulder up. No, you're on right. That. I keep thinking it was the Viking game, but you always correct me. I think it was the Saints game, maybe. Which yep. game was it that he busted his shoulder up? Uh, now I can't correct you because I can't remember f that far back. It was in 2021, though. Yeah, it was the Steelers uh, anyways, game. Yo, it was uh, Najee Phoenix Harris. Sons. Najee Harris, he was Pittsburgh. Tackling. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Steelers. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, yo, I don't think there's a more imposing mascot than the Phoenix Suns uh, gorilla. I think he is the most imposing mascot that we have. Can anybody beat the Phoenix Suns gorilla? For imposing anybody? mascots. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'll have to well, do Bangles some. Well, Bengals done some great stuff off a ladder. Yeah, but you know, listen, a gorilla is going to kill a buck. Like that. That's not even, that, that's nature. <laughs> like, that ain't happening. All right. As, as, as much as I would love okay. to continue this discussion. <laughs> Uh, we need to get Whoa, to the 11 o'clock hour. Uh, Dan, you got two out of three right. That means you got three of the possible four entries into the drawing at the end of the week. Thanks for playing, buddy. Jack Rabbit Mama sends her regards. Yeah, go Yolts, baby. Great places, great places, South Dakota. That's a lot of South Dakota theme music in one small, pan, small window of the show. The we'll people love it. The 11 o'clock hour which will include a look at something that Matt Bowen wrote at ESPN.com in advance of his scheduled appearance later in the week, plus a visit from our friend Gabe Neitzel. That's still ahead as well. Stick around. 
The 11 o'clock hour kicks off in two minutes. It's Wilde and Tausch. Don't go anywhere. Another hour of Wilde and Tausch, presented by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin, is coming up next on ESPN Wisconsin, the ESPN app, and Wisconsin On Demand. Mark Tauscher here, and when I was on the hunt for a hot tub, I found Patio Pleasures, a locally owned family business. Patio Pleasures has a passion for making your home a place for recovery and relaxation. And that's why I'm excited about my new cold plunge from Patio Pleasures. They only showcase premium recovery and relaxation products, and that's how I know it's going to be great. Gear up for spring and check out Patio Pleasures' two incredible showrooms, Madison West and Sun Prairie. Hey, this is former Badger Brad Norman. Norman is a fake. Great call and great execution. You're listening to a Good Karma Brands radio station. 100.5 ESPN, WTLX, Monona, Madison. Broadcasting live from the Everlight Solar Studio, this is your Metro Kia of Madison Sports Center. Good morning, Madison and streamers everywhere. I'm Jesse Nelson, Sports Center, brought to you by A Banner Year, celebrating the 10-year anniversary of the first of the back-to-back Final Four appearances for Wisconsin men's basketball. All four episode podcasts, including an appearance from soon-to-be Hall of Fame inducted Bo Ryan, now available. Subscribe to the Varsity Podcast on Apple, Spotify, and Wisconsin On Demand. Big bounce-back opportunity for the Milwaukee Bucks tonight. Having dropped four straight games and six of their last seven, the Bucks host the best team in the NBA, the Boston Celtics, tonight at Pfizer Forum. Tip time set for 6.30. Pre-game coverage starts at 6 after Rutledge and Hamilton right here on Madison's home of the Bucks, 100.5 ESPN. The Bucks, according to ESPN Bet, are one-and-a-half-point underdogs for tonight's game. And despite the recent losing skid, Milwaukee's still in the number two position in the Eastern Conference standings. A game up on the Orlando Magic and the New York Knicks and a game and a half up on the Cleveland Cavaliers with less than one week to play in the season. The Bucks have two games against Orlando later this week that could be pivotal in those conference standings. Again, Bucks celtics tonight at 6.30, nationally televised on TNT. And listen to it right here on 100.5 ESPN. Metro Kia of Madison, Madison's trusted Kia dealer. Stop into Metro Kia on the east side of Madison or MetroKiaOfMadison.com. begins now and it begins with a piece from our friend another great player from the 1999 2000 1999 senior class 2000 draft class you got Mark Tauscher you got Tom Brady you got Bubba Franks you got Matt Bowen Matt Bowen of ESPN.com Tausch, uh, I know once again that it is draft industrial complex season, and so there's it's overwhelming how much draft content there is. Wouldn't you agree? Like, there's just too uh, much. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, but we're going to talk to Matt Bowen a little bit later in the week, and Jesse has booked him. Good job, Jesse. Uh, and... He, I don't know if this is what you were hoping for from him because you seem to be a Cooper DeJohn guy. No? I mean, besides being uh, a child. No, guy. I'm not saying. No, I'm not saying that's. Uh, I just. Again, you look at enough stuff and they have seen a lot of mocks that he goes in that realm. And then uh, all of the reporting from yesterday after his pro day was he ain't going to be there. Mm-hmm. His RAS score and. What his tape looks like makes you believe that he'll be gone before Green Bay gets to that spot. I think there's a few reasons. Um, you know, Obviously, that position is something. The Iowa pipeline, it feels like Green Bay likes Iowa players. Half yeah. the tailgate tour is Iowans. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of things that kind of play into that. But, no, I, am by no, I, I will be very happy if they get a really good offensive lineman. That's where I think they need to live, or if they can get chop. Like those would be my my wish list would be 
there, not a defensive back. Well, so the Matt Bowen piece at ESPN.com right now, which you can find there, uh, is 20 players who are perfect fits for specific teams. And the reason I ask you about this is because as of now, and again, I think Matt wrote this before Cooper DeGene's workout yesterday. He's got him going to the Buccaneers as a perfect fit for Tampa Bay at number 26. And then he's got your guy, old boy, Chop Robinson, as a perfect fit for the Cardinals at 27, which, again, would have both those guys on the board if this happened. And I agree, you're right. Yep. I don't think Cooper DeJohn is going to, DeJohn, DeJean, DeJohn is going to be there. But then you scroll down a little farther, and the perfect fit for the Packers, according to your old teammate, Matt, did you block him on Dane's record-setting run, or was he just I'm caught sure in the wash? I'm sure I did. I blocked. Yeah, I think I got everybody on that one. At 41, Kamari Lassiter to the Packers, a corner from, you guessed it, Georgia. <laughs> So the idea that Matt is suggesting is that they add a corner in the second round, not uh, moving up to get his fellow former Iowan uh, and not taking Chop Robinson. Look, I, I understand Georgia is a powerhouse. How would you view if for the fourth time in five first-round picks they took another Georgia guy? Because I'd be fine with it. the jury is still out on... Eric Stokes. I think the jury is still out on Devontae Wyatt. And while we talk a lot about what we think Quay Walker is going to be, especially in a new scheme, do we really know what he is? Yeah, I think Quay's a good player, and I think we all are anticipating him making a big jump. Uh, same thing with Wyatt, but. I want, for as much as we love the underdog story and the Christian Watson coming from a small school, I I want to see guys, like like I told you, when I watched the Alabama-Georgia game and doing a ton of Wisconsin games the last couple of years, it's a different brand of ball. Like, it's just different. And you're going to be tested in ways when you're playing in the big boy SEC um especially up front if you have guys that uh that are impactful players georgia's program does it the right way i think kirby smart has done a fantastic job and i think there's a level of comfort that brian gutekunst has with certain people and that's the reason you see that pipeline open up now to your point you could look at it and say well I don't know, has it been a home run with uh, uh, drafting all these Georgia guys early? And you, you'd say no. Right. It has not been. It's it's not terrible, but it is not. When you're talking about the draft capital utilized on Georgia Bulldogs, that's what, three ones, right, that you're looking at with Stokey, with Quay, and with Devante. Right. You have not gotten your production when you factor all that in. But I like – drafting players from big boy programs. It's like I love offensive linemen from Wisconsin. I want to see D linemen and corners that are playing against the best of the best, the LSU wideouts, when you have to cover, you know, if you're at Alabama or if you're in Georgia. That's, Quarterbacks think, from Utah iron State. Sharpens, iron sharpens iron. Well, and in fairness, I mean, you, you look at the talent, you try to project, but there's a reason that Jordan Love was not – the first top three picks, right? And that's because he was raw, and he did not have to play against all the big boys. He needed that time to grow and develop. And you know, Goody saw enough talent that made him think that he could grow into that. And that, for at least the last ten weeks of the season, that's what we saw. Well, as we get closer and closer to the draft, we will see more and more reports about who they like and who they don't, and how it's going to play out. But. Again, I don't know how many people had pegged uh, Lucas Van Ness as the 13th overall pick a year ago. Uh, I had him on my list of possibilities, but, uh, again, going going and paying uh, Rashawn Gary a big extension, 
uh, which you knew they were going to do, the fact that they did that shows you that it could be any position. Uh, so we'll wait and see where they go. But I, I'm Team Tausch on this. I still think that if there is, you know, there's the Georgia offensive lineman that they had a 30 visit with last week. Mm-hmm. So you could go Georgia and not go defense if you want to. I would say the only spots that I would be shocked uh, that they used a first or second day pick on would be quarterback and wideout. That those would be the two positions I'd be really surprised by. Outside of that, I would not be surprised if you see a running back grabbed, corner, safety, D line, O line, uh, even tight end. I would not be shocked if they saw somebody that dropped and they felt like could be another nice addition to that room. I would be the only spots I feel like would be a big surprise with those early picks would be quarterback and wideout. Well, we will find out soon enough. We are under three weeks away uh, from the 2024 NFL draft. Uh, Tausch, forget about the draft for a second. Whoever they end up picking, there's probably going to be a chance to project their more or less on prize picks once they're in the fold. Mm -hmm. Uh, Indeed, they are, and prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million active members. And, boy, it's simple. Pick more or less on two- to six-player stat projections and just watch the winnings roll in. You can win up to 100 times your cash on prize picks with little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into 1,000. Basketball, hockey, baseball. Prize picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't return in the second prize pick, We'll have your back and not count that as a loss. And right now, I know Jason is a big NASCAR guy. He's covering the MMA. He's doing everything. Justin Gaffchi. Normally, you get you know somewhere between 50 to 100 strikes. They're giving you a free square with Justin Gaffchi. 0.5 strikes. Pile that up with the Masters. I love prize picks with the Masters. Score, aim end corner, all that. Prize picks is everywhere, and it's simple. 60 seconds or less to submit an entry. They offer weekly promotions like the Gatchy one. Just download the app. Use the code WI for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. That's code WI on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to 100 bit, 100 bucks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Our friend Gabe Neitzel of Jen Gabe and Chewy joins us to talk about his Mac Fund fundraising opportunity, and we'll ask him a little bit. I feel like bit. you and I are going to fight. I feel like you and I are going to fight here. I feel like why be some stuff that come. I just got a bad feeling. Like you, I'm gonna put some. I'm gonna. You and I, I, I are gonna. You're like manifesting this. Yeah. What? No, I, I just Gabe doesn't make anybody fight. No, no, no. But I think with Gabe trying to raise money for the Mac fund and all the stuff that he's doing, you know where this is gonna go. You guys know where this is gonna. Go. Elmo. Jason knows. Like, I just want to be preemptive with it. I, you know where this is going. I, I appreciate you being preemptive. I am not uh, dressing up. Are you in sour, any... Elmo? Will you be sour with the 200 deal, or is that? You're oh, going to the golf yeah, thing? Golf, the... golf is Elmo. Yeah, it's golf. That's what he's doing, right? He's going to golf a ton of holes? He is, but he's yeah. a really good golfer. No, he uh, is a really good golfer. Yeah, but I, we, we as a show want to help him and help him raise money. And you know that I'm going to probably go down that road. I just want to preemptively warn you so that you don't get mad as we're kind of no. unfolding. As we good. Do I, I appreciate the preemptive yeah. warning. I, I, I will, knew you would. I will preemptively warn you that I don't care what you say. I'm, I'm not if doing. everybody's doing everything preemptively, we're just doing it. <laughs> and then we don't have to do it when he comes on. We can let him talk about his charitable work instead. Gabe Neitzel of Jack Gabe and Chewy joins us next. It's Wildy and Tausch. This is Wildy and Tausch, presented by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Call Gina Della from Pella today, 855-PELLA-WI, and online at PellaWI.com slash radio. Mark Tauscher here to tell you a little bit more about Everlight Solar. 
We all know that electricity costs are on the rise. That's why you need to talk to my friends over at Everlight Solar. Their local team here in Madison is here to keep it simple. From your no-cost consultation to solar panel installation, the team at Everlight Solar will be with you every step of the way. Not only will they help you save money, but by switching to solar, you're also helping save the planet. Everlight Solar, a proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. Check them out at everlightsolar.com. The 2024 NFL Draft on ESPN Radio. Are you ready? Live from the heart of downtown Detroit, Michigan. The NFL Draft is now officially open. The countdown rolls on. The 2024 NFL Draft on ESPN Radio, ESPN, and on ABC. What does it take to make a diamond? Extreme heat and pressure in about a billion years. But you can't wait that long. What do you do? You go to Goodman's Jewelers. I'm John Hayes from Goodman's Jewelers. There's a reason we are the Diamond Store of Madison. Since 1933, we've provided outstanding service and selection to our customers, and that in turn has helped to establish countless great memories through the years. GoodmansJewelers.com, located at 220 State Street, truly a destination worth reaching. Join the Madison Money Guy, Christian Finfrock, for Retirement Income Strategies, Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7. Get the information you need as you plan for retirement. That's Retirement Income Strategies, Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7. Investment advisory services offer the Retirement Income Strategies and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. The Packers Tailgate Tour is coming to Sun Prairie on Friday, April 12th to help support Sunshine Place, a nonprofit community resources center dedicated to household stability in Sun Prairie and Eastern Dane County. Sunshine Place provides meals, clothing, and living support supplies along with a wide array of social and community services to community members facing food insecurity and other hardships. Join the Packers Tailgate Tour in supporting Sunshine Place of Sun Prairie and Dane County. Visit sunshineplace.org to learn more. Mark your calendars and get ready for game day at the 5th Annual Easter Seals Wisconsin Celebrity Basketball Experience, presented by Affiliated Dentists. Former UW athletes hit the hardwood on April 13th at Madison College to support children and adults with disabilities. Tip-off is at 3 p.m. And for some pregame action, be sure to register your kids grades 3 through 8 at the Shot Doctor Skills Academy from 1 to 2.30 with former UW men's basketball assistant coach Gary Close. All abilities welcome to register. Visit easterseals.com slash game day for more details. Metro Kia of Madison is Madison's trusted Kia dealership, and they are home of the 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. If you're looking to purchase, finance, or service your vehicle, Metro Kia of Madison is the place to go. As always, at Metro Kia of Madison, you can enjoy two years of no-charge maintenance on any new vehicle. Browse their inventory and find this month's special at MetroKiaOfMadison.com. That's MetroKiaOfMadison.com. Find your new vehicle at your trusted Kia dealership today. I've been here for 28 years. I didn't know anything about trailers when I started here, and now I know a lot about trailers. <laughs> I enjoy what I do very much. I like the interaction that I have with my coworkers and the pride that you have making the trailers. You always see them going down the road and you say, hey, that blue and white sticker, I made that trailer. My name is Sue, and I'm proud to be a part of Stoughton Trailers. Stoughton Trailers, big trailers, big opportunity. Are you looking for a fast-paced job in a fun and exciting work environment? Look no further than Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. We offer a wide range of job and shift availability in both part-time and full-time positions. Competitive wages and great benefits await you at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. Visit us in person or check out our website to see all of our job openings. Make work fun and apply for a job at Madison's only casino. Wilty and Tausch on 100.5 ESPN is brought to you by Everlight Solar. Save money, save the planet. Everlight Solar. If you asked me to name one of our teammates who would be least likely to be involved in us arguing, Gabe Neitzel would probably be at the top of the list. So I appreciate your uh, advance warning. Uh, preemptiveness. Uh, but I, I think we've already covered this ground, so you probably don't need to cover it again. But you will anyway, because that's what you do. Joining us now to talk about what he is doing on behalf of the Mac Fund and to talk 
about sports in general because you can find him on Jen, Gabe, and Chewy. I feel like every time I turn on national ESPN radio, I hear his voice when I'm driving in the car. He is Gabe Neitzel. Gabriel, good morning. How are you? Good morning, boys. I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Uh, I'll let you know when the segment's over because Tausch thinks he's going to piss me off. <laughs> But at least yeah, he warns you. Like he's letting you know. Like I feel, I feel he deserves credit for that for giving you a heads up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no I'm trying to be preemptive because. So, Gabe, can you kind of fill us in? You've been doing this now for years. I'm a little bit bummed that you mm-hmm. didn't just take over for me for the whole day like you normally did, where it's the Gabe Knights <laughs> will take over for three hours. You're you're limiting it to just one so, segment today. But so am I. I know. <laughs> Tell us what your what this is again, and kind of remind everybody what's going on. Yeah, so the Mac Fund runs a golf event every year called The Ringer, um, which is which signifies it has a special meaning because when kids are, are done with their cancer treatments or get to leave the hospital, they ring the bell. So uh, Mike Belowski over at uh, the Mac Fund cleverly called this event The Ringer. This is my fifth or sixth season uh, that I've participated in this event. And yeah, usually because it's a you know long day of golf, I, I jump on all the different shows. Um, but this year's a little bit different. Me and Greg Matzik are teaming up together, trying to combine the powers of ESB in Wisconsin and WTMJ to get some fundraising going. And um, because of that, we, we've gotten a couple of partners involved, the biggest one of being Scream and Sicilian. Um, our friends over at Scream and Sicilian in Palermo's. So this year, uh, if you donate to our fundraising page, I'll tell you how to get there in just a moment. Uh, if you donate $25, you get one entry. If you do, uh, uh, donate $50, you'll get three entries into a great prize pack that Palermo's and Scream and Sicilian have given us. It is pizza for a year. So you get 24 pizza coupons, um, a pizza cutter, some cool Scream and Sicilian swag, swag and a pizza oven. So uh, pizza all over the place. You'll have a great opportunity to win some great prizes courtesy of our friends at Palermo's. All people have to do to help donate uh, and, and help raise money in the fight against childhood cancer is text CARES, because this is part of the ESP Milwaukee CARES initiative. So C-A-R-E-S to 800-990-3776. The link gets sent right to your phone. You can find the Donate Now button on that uh, on that webpage. And again, $25 gets you one entry. $50 gets you three entries into the prize drawing for uh, a great prize pack, courtesy of our friends at Scream It's Sicilian. Ultimately, at the end, we'll have three winners. So plenty of opportunities for people to win pizza for a year. So, and you're playing as many holes as you can from sun up to sun. 100 holes. Right? Is that? Yeah, it's 100 holes. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, in the past, we've had people in. 100 and... holes. 200. Uh, I, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> Two on every hole. Um, the only thing I usually keep track of is birdies. Usually, once you like have a putt for bogey, it's like, all right, let's just scrape this and move on. Because, again, you, you got to keep going with the pace. But usually some people will reach out and don't say, hey, I want to donate $5 or $10 per birdie. So um, after, after you've gotten past the birdie attempt, you, you stop taking it uh, as serious. You just try to, try to move on because, again, there's, there's limited daylight here in early spring to get these 100 holes in up the bog. All right. Uh, are you going to bring up this golf thing or not, Johnny Preemptive? Well, I think I feel like um, on our I'm, show I'm we want to help. On. I want to help, and I'm sure you want to help, and Jesse wants to help. No, not necessarily. So if, not this way. <laughs> if Jason would be willing to, we've been having no. this debate for years. He's golfing more because his daughters are golfing. Not yet, I haven't. If he's willing to go out to the bog or to Lock LaBelle or any of the course that he picks and lets us video his round, and if he breaks 200, our show will make a nice donation. If he doesn't, we'll still make a donation. But we'll kind of tear it off of how he does shooting. Jason, are you up okay. for that? Uh, nope. Why not? <laughs> just don't want to? So, uh, I, I just want to let you know, and this happened, I don't know how it happened yesterday. I did end up filling in on Rutledge and Hamilton on ESPN Madison. Uh, and I, I, I'm still, I got to follow up with Jim and, and Wooly just to see how this went. But uh, we had somebody who offered a $200 donation that then got matched by myself and Jim Rutledge and a couple of other fans. I think we got up to seven or $800 that people are willing to donate. If a woman calls into Rutledge and Hamilton and asks Ryan Woolersheim out on a date. So like Wooly's wow. putting himself out there, Jason. I'm just saying if Wooly's willing to put himself out there, like I'll invite you, you can come to the Wisconsin Country Club 
round on me, buddy. We can play together. We'll get our, our content team. We'll get our marketing team out there. We can, we can you know, get you rolling on a round of golf. Yeah. No. Uh, but I am excited to start I feel fairly confident the that the Wilde and Tausch crew will go fi at least 500 and up to 1,000 if he breaks 200. That's what we'll do. Nope. Uh, but I appreciate okay. that you're uh, willing to at least commit 500. Well, I preemptively to told you because I, I knew this pisses you off. <laughs> so uh, I, am, I am very much intrigued. What if you golf nine holes in your Elmo costume? What if you do that? Uh, I think it'd be hard to see the ball, and that might make for great content for one hole, but probably not for nine of them. But I'd be willing to consider that. I would just say this: uh, having not played the game, other than two hundred's a lot of strokes. Gabe, he's uh, going to break two hundred, right? I, I, you, you just yeah, someday, yes. someday you will understand. Sure. He'll break two hundred. You're never going to accomplish this goal, and you will just give up the ghost. But, I thought with the Mac Fund and Gabe, some of your favorite people, I thought that that might push you over. So well, that's Gabe why is one of my favorite preempt. people. That is accurate. He's making me bowl five days in a row until I throw a 300 in a couple of months. Yeah, so I can't wait till that one round doesn't of golf. happen. Yeah, no. G yeah. Jesse, don't. Gabe, what have been some of the cool? You've done this now five or six years. What have mm -hmm. been some of the coolest fundraising since it doesn't look like Jason's going to jump you in? But I think you've been dressed. Yeah, I mean, what? I mean, Ben. The last yeah, two years, Ben has been slapped. Uh, we'll see if he he's willing to continue that tradition when I jump on uh, KBN later this week. Um, two years ago, Josh did it, and then yeah, last year I got you. I think Greg Scalzo still has a slap. Um, Josh DiMaggio oh, still owes a tattoo. That that show, yeah, that show oh, got out yeah. of control last year when I was on Scalzo and Rust. Uh, we did a great job of, of of raising a lot of money, so we had that. Um, Scals decided that he was willing to cut his hair. I ended up running a half marathon last October because I raised over $13,100, which is something I never wanted to do. And yet, um, you know, had to go through the summer of training to do that and ran the uh, Milwaukee half marathon. So we've, we've had some fun, cool things that have happened over the last handful of years. Nice. Uh-oh. I just got note from our good friend Homer that if Jason Wilde shoots under 200, Three thousand dollars to Gabe's cause. I mean, oh baby, Jason, it's for the kids, buddy. That's a big number from Homer. Uh, that's a big number from Homer. It is. Uh, no. Uh, so we look forward to you doing this. <laughs> is there a number? Look, I am excited to start playing golf for the first time in two decades plus. Uh, with the girls, and if my game improves, oh, where I actually enjoy playing it, fine. He just bumped it up to four. He just bumped it up to four. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the number is. <laughs> there is not a number. Okay. Uh, I think it does to Gabe and to. But I, yeah. this is where I knew that you'd get a little contentious. That says I'm I not contentious at all. I believe I've been very consistent in my answer. Of no, he, he's been very consistent. What he, if we? Not only has he been consistent, he's been quick with his answer. And what if we poll? The audience, and if they are, would you be nope. willing to abide by the poll? Nope. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, Gabe. Um, um, Ga Gabe, we tried. Uh, Gabe, once hey, again. I appreciate the effort, Tausch. Uh, once again, I think this is going to happen. I think Jason will succumb. I do. I think he will. Although he is a stubborn, as you know, he is a stubborn old mule. He is a stubborn old. I'm going to go live on Bulaga's farm. Uh, Gabe, once again, for people unlike me who are happy to help you with this cause, how, again, do they go about doing it? Uh, really easy. Uh, just text CARES, C-A-R-E-S, to 800-990-3776. A link will get sent right to your phone. You'll have access to our fundraising page. Uh, if you want to reach out to me on social media, if you want to do a donation, um, that's, um, you know, just, hey, I'll donate a dollar per birdie or five dollars per birdie. Uh, me and Greg, every year, our goal is always to have the most people donate um, just because we want to show the reach of, of, of our radio stations. And you never know if that one dollar, five dollar, ten dollars 
is the last little bit that pushes over. Now the Mac Fund has enough money to be able to go and fund and help somebody with their research in the fight against childhood cancer because that's what they do. So um, e even if you're not going to participate or don't want to participate in the pizza for a year, courtesy of our friends from Scream and Sicilian, every little bit counts. And, and coming up here toward the end of the week, we're also going to have um, a nice little, if you want to just wait, we're going to have uh, a good friend of mine who runs his own charity called Paintings for Pediatrics. They want to uh, help out this cause as well, uh, where they're going to be doing a $5,000 match uh, coming up later this week as well. So a lot of great people, a lot of cool people jumping in and helping us out uh, in the cause in the fight against childhood cancer. If you want to find out more about the event as a whole, you can go to MACFUND, M-A-C-C fund dot org slash the dash ringer to find out more about the entire event. Uh, Gabe? All right. I'm, I'm going to add a sprinkler in here. I will caddy for Jason in a Barney costume. I'll caddy in a Barney costume. Nope. Uh, so we will see how this plays out for you. We're very excited for you. You do great work. You are a good human being. We wish you nothing but the best of luck in your pursuits. Uh, there will be a donation coming from me, but it will not be $4,000 from Homer for me to participate in uh, your little plan, Tausch. Gabe, good luck, buddy, and thanks for being such a good human. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks for letting me uh, spread the, uh, the message for the microphone. Uh, we'll play some Whoa Nelly next. It's Wildey and Tausch. This is Wildey and Tausch, driven by Zimbrick Chevrolet in Sun Prairie on 100.5 ESPN. See their full inventory at ZimbrickChevrolet.com. Hey everyone, Molly Brown here from ESPN Madison. For the best Southwestern food and margaritas in the Madison area, it's always Pasquale's Cantina for me. Whether I'm enjoying my favorite taco salad, their awesome chips and guac, or one of their famous burritos, Pasquale's is the best for authentic Southwestern fare. Plus, they have one of the largest tequila selections around. Visit one of their locations in Verona or Middleton today, or check out their menu and order online at Pasquale'sCantina.com. Bringing the flavors of the Southwest to the Midwest. Pasquale's Cantina. Mark Tosher here for Chalmers Jewelers. I've been a big fan of Scott and Garrett and the whole team at Chalmers Jewelers for years now. I go there, my friends go there, and most importantly, my wife loves it whenever I get her something from Chalmers Jewelers. But what's right around the corner? Mother's Day. Show some love to the incredible women in your life and stop at Chalmers Jewelers. The place to go for that perfect gift. I recommend Chalmers Jewelers in Middleton and Madison. Chalmers Jewelers in Middleton and Madison. Home practice is about to begin. Your daughter's new tap shoes? Loud. Your son's new tuba? Louder. But you got this. Just like Associated Banks got you with $50 overdraft grace zone. So if you lose track of expenses buying some noise-canceling and sanity-saving headphones, we've got your back. You got this with $50 overdraft grace zone from Associated Bank. See AssociatedBank.com slash checking or ask a banker for details. Member FDIC. Beautify your entertainment space with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Hi, this is Gina Della from Pella. Turn your ordinary space into something extraordinary with brand new Pella Windows. Plus, getting the perfect windows and doors for your home has never been easier. Right now, get 0% interest for up to 36 months or no down payment, no interest, and no payments for up to 18 months if you book before April 30th. Take ownership of your living space and make it a place worth living with Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Your Honda gets you everywhere. When it needs service, you need Zimbrick Honda Service. Their customer service is second to none, and you can experience it yourself at two convenient Madison locations on Fish Hatchery Road and Grand Canyon Drive. Honda certified technicians handle it all. You can even get flexible payment options. Fix your car now and pay later. Apply online to see your options in seconds with no hard credit check. Make your service appointment online at ZimbrickHonda.com. Zimbrick Honda Service Center on Fish Hatchery Road and Grand Canyon Drive. Part of the Madison community since 1973. Shop Zimbrick Honda. Ben Brust here to tell you about the Princeton Club. I joined the Princeton Club because I was looking for a place I could invest in my health, and the environment and the community I have felt has made it so easy for me to incorporate it into my everyday life. It doesn't matter where you're at in your fitness journey because they have something to offer everyone. It also goes beyond fitness. From the moment you walk in the club to the moment you walk out, there is a togetherness felt throughout the members and staff that keeps you going for your better tomorrow. Don't wait any longer and get started on your fitness journey today at PrincetonClub.net. That's PrincetonClub.net. 
Are you in need of expert exterior renovations? Look no further than Ridgetop Exteriors. For over 22 years, we've been the trusted name in roofing, siding, windows, doors, and gutter replacements. I couldn't be happier with the new roof Ridgetop Exteriors installed. It's like having a brand new home. The team at Ridgetop Exteriors made upgrading my siding a breeze. Quality work and friendly service. With a track record of excellence, we take pride in transforming houses into dream homes. Visit us today at RidgetopExteriors.com for a free consultation. Ridgetop Exteriors, your trusted local affordable partners. Join the Madison Money Guy, Christian Finfrock, for Retirement Income Strategies, Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7. Get the information you need as you plan for retirement. That's Retirement Income Strategies, Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7. Investment advisory services offer the Retirement Income Strategies and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Why are interscholastic sports called the last classroom of the day? Because they teach students important life lessons like teamwork, accountability, and perseverance. Encourage your student to participate in the last classroom of the day. Interscholastic Sports in Wisconsin. On the air, on demand, on social, on Wisconsin Sports. Serving Wisconsin sports fans. This is 100.5 ESPN. Give me one reason to steer, and I'll turn right back around. Give me one reason to steer, and I'll turn right back Time now for Won't Know. If the topic is good, the guys discuss. Just the other morning I had breakfast at Trace Sirocco's house. His mama brought out 15 flapjacks. He said, Mama, take back five of them flapjacks. I gotta stay hungry for the Crimson God. But if it's not, the show must go on. It's time for Whoa Nelly on Wildey and Tausch. Well, we should probably talk about this Bucks game tonight. Tausch, oh. Tausch you going? I'm not. I, I've spent a lot of time in Milwaukee the last uh, week, so I'm I'm gonna chill tonight. But I will. I'm intrigued to watch this one. I think this one tonight will be very interesting because, you know, just going back to what Evan was saying, it's one thing to lose to the Raptors, um, you know, bad basketball teams, the Wizards. Then it's another thing. Can you flip the switch? Can you? And they've done this already. They smoked Boston. What was that a couple months ago when you know they didn't play a lot of their guys, but they beat them by forty or something? So this is one of those get right, like okay, prove it to yourselves that you can do it. Be curious if Boston puts forth the effort to try and just absolutely suffocate Milwaukee. But tonight will be one of those games that I think you can gain a lot by it if you find a way to get it done, and if you don't, it's not really anything because right now the I guess the morale of what's going on is about as low as it could be. Um, Sydney and I are going, so we're excited oh. about that. Uh, we're gonna sit Court in. Side? We're we're gonna sit in some seats that I'm a little more comfortable in sitting in. Thank you again to David Gruber for the opportunity that Sydney thoroughly enjoyed. You didn't enjoyed. like those courtside seats. I was too uncomfortable. Much, too much on you. I, I was uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I ended up on TV. That wasn't great either. You staying like, for the whole game tonight, no matter what? Yeah, no ballet tonight. No. And an early start. Oh, wow. It's six thirty. Uh, wow. And, and we're hoping now. I to Tausch's point, um, I don't know how the Celtics are approaching this game. Sydney wants to see her favorite player, and that's Drew Holiday. Tatum. <laughs> wow. No. So uh, we're hoping that Drew Holiday will play. But if he doesn't, that's okay too. Uh, and she's there to. Cheer on the Bucks and Drew Holiday at the same time. But, yes, I will not be uncomfortably sitting courtside. I will be uh, in the shadows further away. Uh, as much as I enjoyed Ted Kellner's company and Brian Burns and Stephen Watson swinging by and saying hi and talking with Bucks staff, that was great. But once the game started and you're, like, right there, awesome opportunity, incredibly generous of David. Sydney loved it. I didn't love it quite as much. I, so are I, you going to sit up and read a book like the one time with Homer where you sat? With, I wasn't uh, reading a book. <laughs> you That's were doing not what something I heard. not watching the game. With Dave Margolis, uh, Dr. Dave from uh, Children's of Wisconsin. Ah, look, I, I will be watching the game. I'm excited to be there. The last time? What were you doing, though? You were not watching the game last time. Uh, I believe there was some uh, Packers news of some sort, and I was writing a story on my phone. 
I was not reading a book oh at the Bucks game. I had to, I had to write a story, which is not easy to do on your iPhone. I might have you know, uh, but be that as it may, um, we're looking forward to the game tonight, and we will be staying for the whole thing, unless of course the Celtics are winning by a large amount, and then we might sneak out to beat the traffic early. But I, I'm with Tausch. This is really interesting to me because a week ago. We would have thought that this wasn't really significant. The Celtics have wrapped up where they're at in the, as the number one overall seed. You thought the Bucks were trending toward being number two, so they were going to be fine. They weren't going to need this game. And now when you've lost four straight to bad teams, suddenly now this game has a completely different perspective. Well, no. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually more fascinated by Boston's approach to this. Because does Boston want to just Take their souls, and crush, crush the soul? Or do they kind of like just let them hang in the wind and say, oh, yeah, you beat us, but we didn't play anybody. We're not mm-hmm. going to do it. That'll be intriguing, too. Uh, the Bucks, I'm guessing, will go full tilt. But do the Bucks want to be in the two spot where they could play Philly? Do they want to? There's a lot of intrigue as far as trying to set matchups, too. And all along the line, you're trying to build your team into getting some confidence back. Kind of a tricky deal. Whoa, Nelly! Another potential intriguing matchup this weekend got a little buzz on the Bally Sports Wisconsin Brewers broadcast on Sunday afternoon. Wanted to bring this up yesterday. We didn't get to it. So the Brewers visit the Baltimore Orioles this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at Camden Yards. Former Brewer and Cy Young winner Corbin Burns Mm -hmm. is tentatively slated to be Sunday's starting pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles. Brian Anderson and Bill Schroeder were talking about that potential matchup back and forth, and Bill Schroeder said he wants nothing to do with Corbin Burns. He's like, yeah, I'd I'd be okay if we didn't face him. And B.A. was like, are you sure? Like, That'd be kind of fun to go up against him. Tausch, when you played former teammates on different teams, did you want to go up against them, or were you okay if you missed them, never saw them? Like Aaron Rodgers with the Jets. Do you think the Packers want to play him? Or would they be okay if they never crossed paths during his time in New York? Well, it depends if they're good. Like, if it's somebody that's lined up and it's, like a, you know, a big-time player. I, I think there's always something to playing against people that you know. You, It's almost like you, you focus in even more. Like, if you're playing your brother or you want to win even a little bit more than if it's just some random player. But you want to win. So I can understand Rock, you know, thinking, well, Burnsy's been so good. Um, it probably is a little bit painful because you've been with this guy for so long and you you know how good he is. But, no, I think it, it adds storylines, and in baseball they need that. Anytime you can add a fun storyline into a game, I think it's needed. So they, I think you should embrace it. Uh, speaking of fun storylines, so last night, who's the guy that had the home run that he hit, like, that hasn't landed yet, and then he hit an inside the park. Tatis. Cruz, or Ellie Dela Cruz, Dela Cruz. Uh, so no, I, it's Tatis uh, versus the Cubs. Oh, are you talking about the Reds? I'm talking about the Brewers yeah. uh, and the Reds last night. Which I went into the uh, UW bookstore in Brookfield Square, and they had the game on in there. And Dela Cruz wears Were a lot you down of down in Milwaukee last night too. I was, yeah, ballet night for Matt. How many miles practice. do you put on in a year? My, miles 2000, you put on in your car? my 2007 uh, Lexus SUV, which is the last remnant of me not having children and being able to afford something for myself and not having to sell hangers on Facebook, uh, just crossed the 217,000-mile mark. What do you think you can get to? I want to get to, like, 350. I do not. I do not want to. Paula's got a great Boucher automotive small SUV that she loves. We are loyal to Boucher for good, uh, but I want to keep driving my old truck as long as I can because it's really nice to only have one car payment. Be that as it may, Levering was on the call last night on TV, and Dela Cruz comes up and he says, much like uh, Bob Euchre in. Uh, Major League, when he says of Pete Vukovic, whatever Pete Vukovic's character is, uh, he leads the league in most offensive categories, including nose hair. 
Uh, he says, Dela Cruz leads the league in jewelry and something else. And it made me laugh out loud in the UW bookstore until Dela Cruz hit one like 500 feet off the batter's eye in center field. Mm. To which Jeff Levering said, I guess if you're going to hit the ball like that, you can wear as much jewelry as you like. And he was exactly right. Touché. So, uh, Whoa, Nelly. Whoa, Nelly! Got a text from Jerry Odd in Canton, Ohio. What would it take for you to wear the Elmo costume to the Bucks game? I'm not. I, I have. I have people that I respect and care about. There, I am not. Let me be clear about this. For those that are curious, Uh-oh. what if it turns the Bucks Uh-oh. season, or what if they go on a playoff Uh-oh. run because Elmo's there? He's get- I would stern now, will do now, here. Now, stern if, will do. if Bango needed some, uh, like a, a, a furry supporter while he was doing his shtick on the on the court, Grover snaps the losing skid. It, yeah, if if I was if I was part of some sort of skit. Where I was on the court to help Bango do something, and then I can't, and then I went back to being normal me. Fine, I am not going to major events to try and draw attention to myself. I'm not going to a Matt Lafleur press conference dressed as Cookie Monster, Cookie, because I don't. That is, in my opinion, you're making it about you. When I wore these outfits for birthday parties, it was about the kid whose birthday party it was. Like you liked it though too. I like. You liked I, how it made I you enjoy feel. bringing people happiness. That's what I do mm-hmm. here. And so I I've, think what happened is uh, we were all taken aback that you have this fun, playful side. None of us knew that. Oh come to on. this degree. Well, I, you're fun. You're, you're, but this, all these Furbies <laughs> that you're getting into, and now all this other stuff. I don't think we all we didn't know this part of your life. And now that we do, we're thinking, well, let's show it a little bit. And it turns out that you're not going to show. I'm not show. going to Pfizer Forum dressed as Grover. <laughs> yeah. What if they win, though? It, Jesse, Grover's appearance at Pfizer Forum is not going to fix what has ailed this team, which I heard Mark Tauscher, noted NBA analyst, as we confirmed his resume. They look old. They look tired. What? If they, they don't look like a team that's going to go very far. If they don't win a game before game one of the playoffs at home, if we got three tickets and I went as Dunzo, Tausch went as Barney, and you went as, went as Grover, as would you do it? <laughs> the three of us go in co- – if they don't win a game until the playoffs start, we go to game one dressed up to try and change the – maybe they just need a laugh in a tough season. Uh, I will say this. If you want to reach out to Peter Fagan – and Barry Baum and Dan Smichek and everybody over at the Bucks, and they think that we can help the team by showing up in a series of costumes. I will consider it. I don't see that as them viewing as a solution for what's gone awry in recent weeks. I tend to agree with Jason on this one. I, do. I appreciate your support. <laughs> I believe we're done with Wonelli now. At yep. least I hope so. <laughs> uh, definitely, we are. Wait, do you have a do you have a Dunzo costume that I'm not aware of, no, Jesse? No, I know people who know how to do face paint, and so I'd figure it out. But no, I don't have a costume. But Goodwill's not that far away. Costume store, Amazon's in the palm of your hand. It's all there. Hmm. That's it for Wonelli. We'll wrap things up next. It's Wildey and Tausch. Watch every ESPN Madison show live every day. Subscribe to ESPN Madison on YouTube for live video of every show and exclusive content. Just search ESPN Madison. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million active members. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can win now up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into 1000 with basketball, hockey, and baseball entries today. Prize picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and doesn't return in the second, prize picks will have your back and not count that as a loss. Prize picks is really simple to play. 
I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Prize Picks also offers weekly promotions and special offers for the biggest moments in sports. Download the app today and use code WI for a first deposit match of up to 100 bucks. That's code WI on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. You, ra, ra. Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin present your Badger Minute. Here's Alex Strofe. This Badger Minute brought to you by the Great Dane Pub and Brewing Company, Madison's home for craft beer and pub food since 1994. Find the Great Dane nearest you at greatdanepub.com. Former Wisconsin men's basketball coach Bo Ryan is headed to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame announced over the weekend. Ryan, who led the Badgers to back-to-back Final Fours during his time as head coach, reacted to the news on ESPN with Reese Davis and Jay Billis. I coached in junior high, high school, NAIA, Division Three, and then Division One. So my, my love for the game is on paper with 42 years of trying to help young people find a better path. Ryan will officially be inducted this August alongside 12 other inductees. Badger Minutes on ESPN Wisconsin are brought to you by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin. Schedule an appointment online today at PellaWI.com. Goodman's Jewelers has been providing a sparkle to Madison since 1933. That's a lot of great memories. John Hayes for Goodman's Jewelers. We've been caring for generations of customers, and during that time our strengths have been trust, service, and selection. Those traits are who we are, and that will never change. Goodman's Jewelers, a destination worth reaching. 220 State Street, goodmansjewelers.com. The best is at Goodman's. Attention, business owners and executives. Looking for a bank that's invested in your community as you are? Look no further than Starion Bank. As a Dane County community bank, Starion offers competitive deposit and loan rates while actively supporting local initiatives. Visit a business banker at one of our convenient branches in Middleton, Monona, and Sun Prairie. Starion Bank, full service business banking, lending, and cash management. Madison athletes seeking elite training need to get started today at Total Athlete Performance. TAP is here to serve and educate the serious athlete with their speed, agility, and semi-private training options. Sessions are now available in both Windsor and their TAP facility inside the Verona Athletic Center. Also access remote training anytime, anywhere with the Total Athlete Performance app. Visit TAPWisconsin.com for subscriptions, including monthly payment options. That's TAPWisconsin.com. When you're in the right place at the right time, things get done. The important things, like knowing what you need and how it all works. Talking truck. Fixing it right the first time. At Zimbrick Chevrolet, our people get it done right and now. That's how you know you're in the right place at the right time. And you'll never overpay at Zimbrick Chevrolet. We're on the Bucks. This Bucks team looks too old to be able to make it to the finals. Because we're on Wisconsin Sports. They have the talent, but will they have the legs? Nobody covers the Bucks like 100.5 ESPN. I know it's hard to remember the discussion we had earlier with the golf discussion and the furry discussion and all the hijinks that ensued. Yeah, we kind of hit the gambit today. There's a lot of moving parts today. Uh, uh, yes, there were, and it was a lovely, fun day. Uh, but we started the show with me coming home from Lambeau Field where we talked to a myriad of folks that were departing on the tailgate tour, including... Brian Bulaga, Mike Daniels, but we also talked to Mark Murphy about Brazil. Here was my exchange with him in case you missed it. Mark, one more thing about um, Brazil. You were talking about Packers everywhere. I mean, this brand is international. Do you get the sense that the league would like you guys to go to Brazil? Yeah, I think we're either the first or second most popular team in Brazil. They Apparently they like green and gold. <laughs> I think we, I believe... 
They're not really sure. I think New England might be ahead of us because of Tom Brady and Giselle, but you know, so, so I think that's <laughs> a few years. <laughs> no, I think we're uh, we're very popular there. I mean, it's you know, as we talked about, we're kind of the people's team. You know, I think <clears throat> people really like the idea of a community-owned team and, you know, with our history and tradition. Is the drawback just from, you know, coaches are creatures of habit. They they want to be able to just have regular weeks. Is that one of the drawbacks from a football perspective is how yeah, different that is? Yeah, the logistics, I mean, uh, you know, the Philadelphia will just hop on a plane and go down, and we're not sure that we'll, you know, exactly what, what we'll have to do to get to Brazil. You're going to Brazil, and we'll see when that becomes official. <laughs> Uh, perhaps soon. We'll have to wait and see. That's it for us today. We Apparently will they do like it. green and gold. <laughs> you love that hot key. We'll do it again tomorrow. Have a great day. Take care. Be good. Miss any of today's episode of Wildey and Tausch? Presented by Pella Windows and Doors of Wisconsin? Commercial-free, full-show podcasts are available free 